Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, reconvene um, this meeting of the Board of Supervisors, uh, June 28, 2016. I'll look to our County Council so you can report out of closed session. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Board of Supervisors met in closed session and discussed agenda item number five on today's closed session agenda. The board met and conferred with legal counsel regarding anticipated litigation and the significant exposure to litigation pursuant to section 54956.9 in one case. The closed session is authorized by section 54956.9 D2 and E1. The uh, second case was not discussed was not discussed and was stricken from the agenda. Additionally, uh, agenda item number two on the closed session agenda, the closed session to meet and confer with the county's labor negotiators, that has also been stricken from the agenda and was not discussed. Agenda items number one, three, and four will be discussed this afternoon at noon and reported out thereafter. Thank you. So moving on, we'll go on to item C. Uh, uh, the presentations and recognitions, see none. We'll move to item D, which is public comment. This is an opportunity for the public to address the board on items of interest not appearing on the agenda. No action may be taken unless it is provided by government code section 54954.2. Mr. Clerk. Mr. Chairman, Marvin Jones would like to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, board members. I just have an observation, not a criticism. <laughs> that uh, last week or two, I've had occasion to go to the John Smith landfill a couple of times. I was really impressed with the number of 18-wheel type dump trucks that come in there, the great big things. Eight-foot slides, when they lift the dump it, they must be 30 feet in the air with all of the trash coming in. And I remember several years ago when y'all authorized the uh, importation of additional uh, uh, trash from outside of the county that the primary reason was the revenue stream. And I must say that uh, you did very well if your goal is the revenue stream. Uh, there are quite a few that come out there. I don't recall what, I don't know what they pay but there's a lot of refuge coming in from outside of San Benito County going into the John Smith landfill. Uh, that's just an observation. Again, no criticism. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Marvin. Mr. Marty Richmond. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Marty Richmond from Hollister. I'm glad to see you all survived yesterday's budget hearing. I did too. Um, I want to talk to you, of course, you know what's coming. I want to talk to you about this ballot measure for a 1% sales tax. You need to get it on, you need to get it on the, on the ballot. Um, if you don't get it on the ballot, then you can't blame the public because you didn't give them a chance to vote. When they come in here and complain they don't have the money, you're just going to have to bite your tongue because you didn't even give me a chance to say no. What are we afraid of? We're afraid they will say no. Uh, you can't use the argument that it costs $30,000 because if you don't put it on, the first thing you're going to do is give $30,000 to some, some consultant to, to ask him what do you think the public would have voted had they voted. And then when he gives you an answer, you're going to say, how do you know that's accurate? The best way to find out it's accurate is to let them vote. You will know what your baseline is. You will know how many people are going to vote for this without a campaign. And if it doesn't make it, you will know what you have to make up in two years. But you know, uh, your potential gain is um, f over two years is $5.6 million. And that will cost you 30000 is your gamble. That's less than one half of 1% what you're going to take back. You set your whole general plan up to have four nodes commercial nodes on 101. How do you expect to get any money out of that commercial node if you don't have a transition sales tax? 
<clears throat> what do you have to trade for to get somebody to build those nodes if you don't have a transition sales tax? If you have a transition transaction sales tax, you can give them back three years at the one percent. Doesn't cost us a dime. And by the way, that's not going to hurt anybody in the county. We all know it's all set up to take take money from the commuters between Santa Clara and Monterey, and that's the way it should work. Okay. My guess is the local people will go where the gas is the cheapest because they live here. Um, I, I don't get it. We got billions of dollars driving by. Uh, this county and through this county and we we just wave at it and then we come home and complain that we don't have any money so I think you ought to give the voters a shot I think you ought to get it on the uh, get it on the ballot I I don't understand what you got to lose we're 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 adult enough to take no for an answer uh, and then you'll know where the voters stand uh, you heard my speech yesterday about covering up uh, the problems. I think uh, doing things like um, taking uh, the money, putting it toward the roads, and then uh, shortchanging uh, all kinds of um, departments throughout the county because the people didn't vote for Measure P is a bad idea. You, you know, if they don't want to fix the roads, then don't fix the roads. It's silly to just punish them somewhere else. Thank you for your time. And thank you for your comments, Marty. No other speaker cards, Mr. Chair. Okay, anyone else wishing to provide comments to the board? Now is the time to do so. <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move on uh, to the CAO for our department head announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, we do have an announcement out of our auditing office. We have our auditor here, Joe Paul Gonzalez, to give you a quick update. Good morning, Chair, Board of Supervisors, Joe Paul Gonzalez, County Clerk, Auditor, and Recorder. Just wanted to give you a quick update on the bank transition. The County Treasurer has selected the Wells Fargo Bank as the new bank. So the, the project we hope before us is to transition from Bank of America over to Wells Fargo Bank. That process has begun, and uh, we are you know, we have met several times, well, yeah, several times uh, internally. Internally, we have a, like a, a bank transition team, the auditor's office, the treasurer's office, uh, members of, the, of each office. Uh, Health and Human Services, they're, they're a critical, critical part of the whole bank transition because of <coughs> all the payments that come out of that department. We also have uh, the schools, the county, the county uh, is the responsible party for all treasury functions as it relates to the schools. So that process is um, is underway. We're going to take a kind of a like we have in the ERP uh, project. We're going to take kind of a staged approach. <clears throat> our um, our goal is to get all the county payments, internal county payments, which includes the C4 payments on behalf of Health and Human Services, get those payments, the payroll department uh, payments, the uh, you know the checks, the, AC, the direct deposit files, all those tested in this month, in, uh, excuse me, in July, so that by the end of July, we can actually make the transition over as uh, for the county payments, internal county payments. As you know, the county does not produce the checks on behalf of the schools. Those, those checks are produced in Santa Clara County by the uh, Board of Education there in Santa Clara County. And in turn, they use a third party administrator uh, to program their system for those types of payments on behalf of Santa Clara County and on behalf of San Benito County. So we're kind of at the mercy of that third party uh, contractor to be able to accommodate the change, the change in banking, change of banks. And that process is gonna take uh, longer. So first stage is to get the, the county, all the county checks printed in July. By the end of, Jul by the, end of the July, we'll make transition because it doesn't make sense 
to go uh, transition, you know, in between the month. It makes a lot more sense to transition at the end of, of the month. And so our goal is the end of the end of July, we'll cut off Bank of America for all county payments, um, except for the schools. And then the following, whenever, you know, whenever the schools are, are you know, finally are ready, uh, we'll, we'll transi transition those, those payments over. What makes this thing complicated is it both uh, the health and human services and the school's checks are by, st by statute, those payments, those check payments are negotiable for six months. So that means that their checks need to be uh, good for six months. So if we're writing checks in July, in January, sometime in January, those, those checks should be good up until then. Well, you know, that's, that's kind of the dilemma that we have where we're trying to meet, uh, you know, comply with that statutory uh, requirement at the same time uh, transitioning in a way that uh, complies with the statutes. So that's, that's our challenge. So we think that we'll be, we'll be fully tested in July for the county's transition, uh, at least, you know, payroll, accounts payable, C4 checks for those payments to be transitioned over uh, by the end of July. Is there any questions that I can answer? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, by that report, if your transition out to your payable is uh, at the end of July, we should be done with Bank of America by January 31st, is that? Well, actually, Bank of America is going to, you know, we're, we're going to uh, open up discussions with Bank of America to ask them to keep the accounts open uh, at least until the six-month period at which the last school's check is written so that those checks uh, could be negotiated. Or if all those checks have been negotiated already, we can actually close the account earlier. Right, but so right now the drop dead date for closure of Bank of America account is December thirty first. Okay, yeah, but providing that the schools could kind of fall in line at the same time. Well, actually, pro providing that um, it, it, had we transitioned over at the end of this month, with which was our original target, uh, but but not a realistic one, honestly. Um, then the six months would have, would have uh, coincided with the December 31st closure of the Bank of America account. So it really depends upon how quickly the schools can transition over will determine when our, that real date will be. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Joe Paul. Yes, we have another announcement coming out of our RMA department. We have our director here, Brent Barnes, to give you a report. Good morning, board members. Uh, several things very briefly. First is a good news story. It's not very large, but it's a good news story. And that is that the formula-driven uh, trash collection rate for the county will actually decline by 0.68% this year. So county residents will save a, a few cents. Again, not a very big drop, but it certainly bucks the trend. Secondly, I'd like to report that Mr. Writing Sword, Director Writing Sword, and I attended last uh, Wednesday evening uh, when we skipped out of the, the uh, board meeting, attended the City of Hollister Planning Commission meeting where we were successful in getting the conditional use permit for the homeless shelter approved by the commission unanimously. And that's good news, but even better news is that the commission was very vocal in congratulating the board, um, your board, on the leadership that they have shown for the community in bringing the homeless shelter to fruition. So I wanted to report that to you and, and make sure you got the, the good news story there. Thank you very, very much for your leadership there. Two things related to parks and schools. <clears throat> Excuse me. First is that Santana Ranch, where you're aware we're building several 
subdivisions and a, a whole bunch of new homes and some parks related stuff and an elementary school. I'm meeting tonight with the Hollister School Board to talk about a joint use agreement, at least initiate the conversation about a joint use agreement between the elementary or the K-8 school and the uh, adjoining parkland that, that will be there. There's um, still room to move around in the subdivision some of the parks allocation and so we're going to perhaps rethink the thing the the early things that we thought about uh, such as the the size of the park over the gas line the open space gas line there uh, and maybe bring that into the the uh, school and, and uh, park joint use agreement we'll see how that plays out but I wanted to report that to you we'll keep you informed and let you be a part of that conversation as it goes forward also similarly at Sunny Slope School <coughs> they're looking to do a significant reconstruction of that school which as you may know consists of a number of portable classrooms that have been there forever and ever temporary classrooms that are there a long time um, they're moving forward with a concept for reconstructing that school and are potentially interested in using a part of that site for a library so we'll be entering into that conversation with the school district and with the and with your board as well over the over the coming months don't know how that works out quite or when but it's a, a potential site for a, a community library perhaps uh, finally I met with the project manager from the Caltrans project manager for uh, the route 50, 156 project uh, and this may not be news to you but it was news to me the um, schedule for that is pushed back two years the Union Road area utility relocation work he says will begin in the fall of 2018 and the actual construction of the highway is scheduled for the fall of 2019 and that's my report thank you for your report <coughs> thank you Brent yes we have one last item I was just made aware that item number 18 on consent agenda has one uh, slight typo uh, there's a semicolon in the middle of further um, so nothing has changed um, subst substantively regarding the content so we just wanted to let the board know regarding that and that's all right. that's all the announcements sounds good thank you for that uh, we'll move on to um, our board announcements starting to my left Supervisor Barrios thank you so much uh, mr. chair I just want to thank uh, Jim writing sword um, thank you so much for attending the senior council meeting we were we met in San Juan Batista supervisor Botello set it up there so this way we oh. had we share locations where we meet and I know that the whole person care has is going to be um, extended out you know but it was still very informative and I believe that it was very well received by the senior council I also want to thank the city of Hollister cog the county and all the sponsors that were very successful in putting on the kids at the park on Wednesday the 20 I believe it was the 22nd I don't remember remember the date but I was I, I was honored to have been invited to MC the event again and um, and I really appreciate the fact that the community is investing in our kids and I'll tell you it, the return is amazing and it's all about safety and health so that was a very another successful kids at the park and I want to thank our friend Marvin Jones who sits in the back always at our board meetings I know he's going to be leaving for bigger and better things but you will be missed you're an icon in this community you're an icon in this uh, boardroom and we want to thank you for your contribution to our meetings for your you being involved in the community doesn't matter whether we agree or we don't agree the fact that you care and that you're here speaks volumes so thank you to our friend Marvin Jones thank you mr. chair Mr. De La Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, I too would like to thank Marvin Jones for all the, uh, what do you say, Agenda 22? Is that is that correct? 21, 22. All these years, you can't even get it right. I just so <laughs> many. Have you been listening? No. <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> I, I just, uh, you know, I don't know. I get mixed up on those two agendas, but uh, thank you, Mar Marvin. I, I do appreciate the time and your effort, and you know. I also appreciate the time when you actually helped me on my first campaign. Thank you very much. <laughs> Supervisor Munzer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to report out that the audit committee met um, this morning before, before the Board of Supervisors. 
meeting. And during the committee meeting, I, I said I would thank staff, thank all the department heads for their hard six months work of work putting our budget together that we just went through yesterday. And now we have another six months hard work of getting the CAFA ready because our deadline is December 21st this year, not Easter Sunday. So we're gonna move it up four months. We're, we're gonna be serious about getting it done before, you. before December. Um, I would also like to, to thank Marvin Jones for, for his attending all of our meetings and, and all that he means and have done in this community as he prepares to move on to hotter areas. <laughs> and the last thing, I just want to wish everyone a safe 4th of July and a happy 4th of July, but be safe out there this year. The, once again, California is, is burning. My son, who's a captain in Cal Fire, I used to watch the, uh, the uh, advertisement Cal Fire used to put out and after a heavy rain season they was in the summer they would say well we got a lot of rain the grass is high you know we're gonna be careful with fire and in a year that it didn't rain they would say well we didn't get any rain everything's dry California be careful with fire I go Bryce what's the deal whether it rains or or not what's going on he said dad California burns every summer we know that, so we need to be very careful this year once again because California is already in the process of burning. We have a lot of fires down in Southern California. We need to be extra careful with our fireworks this year. With that, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Munzer. Supervisor Patello. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I guess uh, uh, Marvin Jones didn't support you in your second and third and fourth election. If he just helped you on your first one, Supervisor <laughs> De La Cruz. But <laughs> But uh, personally, I'm going to miss you, Marvin, and uh, uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to get my climate change information anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's really the only reason I ran for a third term was to keep listening to your three-minute <laughs> speech. <laughs> but uh, I did attend uh, a rural county representative uh, of California meeting last week, Wednesday, uh, and it wasn't too, um, too much on the agenda. Uh, quite a bit of discussion was what, Cal what California is doing about the tree mortality uh, problem. And there's some money that's been allocated uh, in a state of emergency declared in a couple of counties. And uh, if you haven't been up to the Sierras to enjoy our forests, now's a good time to go because our forests are in grave danger and uh, with the uh, beetle bark. Uh, and it just seems like uh, the tree mortality is just taking a toll that is just unprecedented. And, uh, you know, hopefully there's a solution in the future, but I don't know what that would be. We also had a presentation from um, a, a San Diego uh, County supervisor, Greg Cox. He's a, a supervisor, five-term supervisor that uh, hopefully uh, Supervisor De La Cruz when he goes to the NACO conference uh, later on this month I believe uh, all 58 counties are participating in NACO for the first time in a long long time we were singled out uh, uh, thanking us for rejoining NACO and hopefully uh, Mr. Cox is successful in his uh, bid for to uh, be uh, vice president uh, second vice president there was a report, I, I alluded to this yesterday during budget, uh, d uh, yes, uh, our budget hearings, and Mendocino County brought uh, a problem forward that they're going through with their wildlife services. We used to have that service here in San Rio County and we gave it up during the recession. And an animal rights group has sued that county for not doing uh, a, a detailed CEQA and uh, Monterey County has been sued as well so I, I guess uh, you know it, it, it's something that uh, probably we're happy that we are not funding right now we'd probably be sued as well maybe the um, 
environmentalists want skunks underneath their houses living there, but I, that's up to them. And one last thing, we had a, a population uh, report uh, given based on information um, and based on these uh, findings, California's population as a whole continues to grow at a very moderate rate of 0.9%. Uh, and San Mateo County, we, we got some numbers here I think my colleagues on the board would find interesting as well as the public. Uh, San Mateo County uh, has had a change from 2015 to, two uh, to January of, of 16 of 0.4%. Hollister was 0.5 percent, um, and in the unincorporated areas, uh, we only had a growth rate of uh, 0.1 percent. That's not to say that we're not going to have some building in the unincorporated areas. It's probably going to be a little bit higher next year, but it's been very moderate uh, to this point. So that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. And thank, thank you for your report. The only thing I have to uh, announce is, is to remind the public that we do have a special meeting scheduled for Thursday, um, June uh, the 30th um, at 6 p.m. It's at San Juan Oaks where we, uh, it, it'll be a joint meeting between the county and uh, the city of Hollister where um, we will have a discussion on the master, um, uh, the tax sharing agreement. Um, and I as well, and then also I wanna wish everyone um, uh, a happy summer you know we're going to be out uh, this is our final meeting until i believe tuesday july 26th so it's essentially a little recess for the board it's a big recess for me because i have another job and i'm off as well so this is a good time for me after uh, our thursday meeting um but i as well want to um thank mr jones marvin jones marvin and i don't agree on much um but marvin's one of those people like many um in the county um, that will call me up, you know, or, you know, uh, he'll come to these meetings and he'll challenge some of my positions. Um, and he keeps me honest. And I want to thank Marvin for that because he's made me a better supervisor for that. And um, he's made me a better person for that. And so, um, you know, I'm going to miss Marvin. And, uh, and uh, you know, I wish him well. So thanks for everything you do, Marvin. We need, and, and we need more Marvins uh, to come to our meetings and to be advocates for the stuff that uh, you know that uh, they feel um, uh, you know they feel um, very passionate about and so that's one thing I admire about Marvin so thank you Marvin uh, so moving on we'll move to our consent agenda uh, we did hear the um, correction on item 18 from our CAO uh, the minor correction are there any items that wish to be pulled by members of the board on consent yeah um, 9 13 and 32 please so 9, 13, and 32. At this time, are there any items uh, on consent that any member of the public wish to pull? Or any, any comments on any of the rest of the items? Seeing none, I will accept a motion for all items on consent with the exception of, of uh, 9, 13, and 32. So move, Mr. Chair, with the amended. Okay, there is a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Now we'll move to item number nine. Mr. Batello. Uh, thank you. I don't see Alan here, but, oh, there he is, right there. And isn't he aware that our policy is not to do business in San Mateo County and to buy cars from elsewhere? That, that. Um, no, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> I no, actually quite thought the it was the opposite. <laughs> you know, uh, the, the, the point, the reason I pulled this is this board, I, I really believe, and, and the COG board has worked extremely hard to try to do all of our business in San Bernardino County where it's possible. And um, I, I'm certainly pleased with uh, this purchase. Uh, from the local car uh, dealership and um, and that's that's our that's what we try to do and and I just had received you know a, a concern from a constituent that uh, says we don't do enough of that and uh, I, I think we do it in every case we can providing that we get an adequate you know qualified bid so that's the only I just want to make a statement that's all 
So I appreciate that. We try to contribute to our local realignment tax every, every chance we get. Um, hey, Alan, I know we have a question from Supervisor De, De La Cruz. Yeah, I was not gonna, actually, I was going to come see you on this one. I, actually, you two were going to come see you about this. Is, I mean, based on my personal experience, uh, I'm not seeing all Ford vehicles, but from my experience, I have actually purchased a new Ford a couple years ago, and, they, and I'm having a lot of problems almost to the point it's going to become a lemon. I would recommend you add a, an item, Ray, where if we're thinking about purchasing a vehicle, I don't care which vehicle it is, we do some simple research, see if there's any manufacturing defects or, re, or recalls on any new vehicles that we might purchase in the future. Just a thought. Yeah, I appreciate that, that sure. comment. And we did also check it on the GSA, the Government Service Agency, on recommended vehicles in, in this mid-size class, and Ford happened to be one of them, so just, it's there. Just throwing, yeah. throwing my, my experience out there. Sure. Any questions or comments from members of the board? Okay, at this time, I'll, I'll open up to members of the public, questions, comments that they may have. See none, I'll bring it back to the board for decision. I'll move forward to approval of this item. Second. Okay, the motion is second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 13, Mr. Botello. Yeah, this is the, uh, uh, my understanding, an extension of the animal control contract and uh, for the purpose of further negotiations, is that what it is? Yes. First, you know, looking at the old contract, Hollister didn't do a very good job in complying with some of the provisions as far as reporting and auditing, uh, uh, giving us information what the inf um, revenue uh, was for, you know, the services that they provide to San Diego County. Hopefully, they could uh, give a summary of maybe the last year of that revenue stream and how that worked uh, up against our, our costs in our contract and what level of uh, performance that they had um, for the amount of money that we're paying for the, for the service. And, and uh, I don't know what, what else is being negotiated at, at this point in time, but you know, I don't know if the chair needs an ad hoc committee or staff needs help from the board uh, with this issue, if there's a hang up or was this just something that was delayed for? Um, yeah, delayed for staffing. We're, we had a transition uh, in our office. Um, we also were knee deep in the budget and there were quite a few things going on. Um, so we, we want to just extend it to actually go through this process and do it correctly. Uh, through the negotiating process. So um, that's the reason why we're here. It's just a, um, I believe it's a half a year extension. So um, with that, um, you know, there are, uh, one of the things I did request of staff uh, was to actually um, ask them to come and give us a presentation. Um, um, we haven't got a response, but I will, I will do my due diligence to make sure I talk to the fire chief and talk to the city, city manager if I need to, to have them come out and and gave a presentation, so I'll do that. Yeah, just uh, you know, s yeah, uh, just something that uh, would demonstrate the performance of, of yeah. the contract. How many hours they've spent yeah. up in the county, and how many dogs or uh, yeah. issues that they've ha had to deal with. It, it would be nice to know. Right. And one one thing, just just so I could add, is that they have um, uh, delivered a a um, report to staff to uh, Sarah, management analyst. Uh, but I did request them to come out to actually present to the board to, to give you uh, an explanation of what that report means. Um, so I'll work on that, and I'll make sure that we get that back to you. Uh, we'll work on it internally. If, if there are any issues, I'll come back to the board. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank I, you. I, actually, Mr. Chair. Sorry, Del Cruz. Thank you. Uh, actually, I, I recall, uh, Supervisor Botello, that they were supposed to give us, like, every three months or every six months report to the board. Mm -hmm. so Mr. Yeah. Chair, if I may. Yeah. Um, actually, an item on page uh, three, f uh, well, it's attachment one of, um, or attachment A, attachment one, scope of services. Item G, it says provide quarterly status reports uh, to include recap of services provided to the county, including, and it goes on and on. So that's one of the reasons why I did ask our management analysts to, to get, uh, to have them come out to give us a report. Um, and I'll just make sure we'll do that. But you're absolutely right, Supervisor De La Cruz. 
Any other questions or comments from members of the board on this item? At this time, I'll open up to members of the public. Comments? Uh, Marty Richmond I did, uh, from Hollister, I did have a speaker's card on this anyway. What was, I wonder if I could ask staff, what was the amount and how long did the contract run the last time it was renewed? Approximate amount. I think it was three years. Three years under. Yes. Three. Ends July, it ends, it ends June 30th, 2016, the current contract. And that's that was three years? That's the reason why and I'm what, standing there. what that's was the approximate cost? Round numbers. Um, <coughs> compensation is total, if I may, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, total compensation is uh, a total sum not to exceed 55% of the total expenses defined here in uh, the proposed annual budget for ACS, <laughs> less cost, 911 communications, uh, infrastructure radio contracts, vehicles, replacement, and fixed assets. Total expenses less. Any revenues collected on behalf of the county will be invoiced as upon uh, as agreed upon by the both entities for services rendered pursuant to the terms and conditions of this contract and pursuant to any special compensation terms specified in the attachments and hence the reason why it's so important to actually have the report okay with well I was I was looking for a dollar figure but that's okay that's that uh, I can make my point without I can make my point without the dollar figure my point is that this is just another one of those invisible services that people get they don't even think about until they use it uh, there's a number of those, um, and 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 because it's the budget time of year, you you got your consent calendar just full of renewable contracts. Just you know, people can look at it it's just one right after the other, whether it be um, <coughs> involving uh, mental health, whether it be involving uh, health and human services, whether it be involving uh, uh, the animal shelter, and and many of these, like the animal, uh, are uh, non subvented yeah, We don't get any money back. Basically, we got to pay for it. So people don't want to pay, pay, t pay, pay a fair tax. Uh, how do they think this happens? Do they think it's magic when you call up the animal services and you say, uh, hey, "Gee, there's a there's a stray dog running around here threatening the neighborhood. Come out and get it." Uh, well, do you think it's magic? Do you think the people who go out there and round it up don't get paid for what they do? Do you think they're working for nothing? Uh, the truth of the matter is that's not the case. And uh, even though uh, I often talk about the rural uh, cost of doing things, uh, in the case of, of the animal uh, issues, uh, we have little uh, islands of, um, of the county unincorporated area right next to the city. We, you know, you don't even realize you're in one or the other. And they get the exact same service. So I encourage people to think about that when, uh, when you change your mind and put the ballot uh, back on there and they have to go vote, I encourage them to think about what they get for their money, whether they're getting their money's worth. And I always demand my money's worth, and they should. But you got to pay something. Thank you for your time. Anyone else wishing to provide comments? Now's the time to do so. And we can look at that cost structure just to make sure it's appropriate when we go forward with the contract. I know that there was a rationale for why it was set that way in the past because of the greater time commitments for some of the larger animals, but we'll just check that cost structure and how it's um, going forward and how, what it's incurred for each year. Okay. Are there um, any other questions or comments, members of the board? Okay, um, bring it back to the board for a decision. I'll, I'll move for approval of this item too. Is there a second? Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Mr. Clerk. Um, Mr. Botello, item number 32. Yeah, um, the modified uh, or new scope of services on this. And I guess they have to um, do some work as far as drainage uh, mitigation of, of the project. You know, it, it, I was to pull this before it was pulled off the agenda from the, what, two meetings ago? The last meeting, yes. Yeah, I wasn't too thrilled with it to begin with because I, I feel like these engineer consultants just keep dragging new amendments all the time when it should have been dealt with in the first original contract and, and uh, convince me how 
you know, I'm, I'm on the verge of voting no on this. There might be a 4-1 four, four vote anyway, but um, I think this work should have been included in the original scope and that there, and with the, the amendment and sometimes some <coughs> things come up, but how many hours does it take to at $85 an hour to do come up with uh, the mitigations or the work that needs to be done? Sure, several things. Mr. Chairman, if I might. Uh, I had asked last time out that this be continued. It was on the agenda for, I, I don't recall exactly the dollar amount, but somewhere around $80,000 if I, if I remember correctly. And, um, but, but to take a half a step back, this is not the um, consultant requesting a change. This is result of a, of a design change that we made decreasing the approaches from 600 feet to 400 feet so that the project has a smaller footprint, less environmental impact on the, on the surrounding property. Um, and so it required some reengineering. When we did that, Caltrans concluded that that was our change, the county's change, and it became non-participating on the, on the Caltrans side. And so <coughs> the reengineering work, the $35,000, that's here, $35,286 is, is our money now. It's a local contribution to the project. And the related CEQA work for the incidental take permit is also on us. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so it's not the, it's not the contractor that's, that requested the change. It was staff to de decrease the size of the project. First part. Second part, when the, when the, uh, consultant came back to us, an engineering consultant. They had added on a series of, of meetings and project management and quality control stuff and, and a, wh a whole bunch of things that, in my opinion, having been a consultant, were boilerplate. And so I pulled it last time so that we could renegotiate those line items and we reduced the cost by about $45,000, $50,000, just pulling those out. Because there is no more quality control that would be required for, for a a change like this, for example. So that was the impetus for our pulling it. Second part of that is that my staff, since I now have a, a person who is eloquent in CEQA, our, my staff will be preparing the CEQA document and we will be um, contracting for the incidental take permit, which is very specialized. We'll do that separately. So that's no longer a, a part of this particular contract. I'm not sure that that gets to all your questions. If I miss something, please let me know. Um. One, one other question. Uh, this, the original term of this contract was from 2012 to 2016. <coughs> Are we going to see a third uh, amendment that because of the de delay of the project that, oh, well, we got some more work <coughs> and oversight to I, I certainly hope not. We're at 65 percent design, and it will not take all that much work to get to 100 percent and be able to move forward with the construction of this. Okay. All right. Well, we made substantial progress. All right. Well, that, that was a good explanation. Thank you. Glad I'm able to answer a question now and then. Are there any um, other questions or comments from members of the board? This time, open up to members of the public. Questions or comments? I see now. I'll bring it back to the board for a decision. It was such a good explanation. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second, Mr. Chair. Okay. All those in favor. I was all set to vote no, too. <laughs> You Mr. Play. Barnes, you should give our reports more often. <laughs> um, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to the public uh, hearing section of our agenda, item number 35, coming out of the Emergency Medical Services EMS, Mr. O'Neill. And this is uh, to hold a public hearing uh, and consider the continuation of a benefit assessment in fiscal year 16-17, 2016-17 that funds uh, the county service area th uh, number 36 for emergency medical services and advanced life support services for the county of San Benito. And we will consider the adoption of a resolution accepting annual report for CSA number 36 and emergency medical services and advanced life support. Well, good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Good uh, I'm gonna go ahead and immediately defer to our uh, EMS coordinator who's gonna give you a report and update on the benefit assessment fee, and I'll come back for any questions uh, from the board or from the public. So this is uh, Chris Mangano, our EMS coordinator. Good morning. Good morning. 
In December of 2015, the Office of Emergency Services and the Emergency Medical Services Agency combined into one organization. In the months since, a lot of work has been done to reconcile the budget, assure financial responsibility, and analyze the needs of the EMS division of OES. Some of our accomplishments to date are reviewing, uh, we've reviewed and revised many policies and procedures that the paramedics and EMTs use every day. We revised the paramedic accreditation process. We launched an EMS newsletter that's distributed to fire agencies and um, EMS field employees and management. We conducted a multi-casualty incident training exercise and drill in cooperation with PG&E, uh, Hollister Fire, CalSTAR, and Hazel Hawkins Hospital. And we have all four Hollister Fire stations that are now safe surrender sites, which means if you, uh, within 72 hours, have a newborn baby, you can safely leave them at a fire station or hospital to surrender them. Um, we at the Office of Emergency Services and the EMS Division serve the lead, as the lead agency for countywide emergency medical services. We are responsible for coordinating all system participants within the county and are responsible for planning, implementing, monitoring, and evaluating the EMS system. This includes establishing policies and procedures, addressing the financial aspects, and making provisions for collection, analysts, and dissemination of EMS-related data. We are pleased to share that by adjusting our expenditures, we were able to save approximately $150,000 in this current financial year over the approved budget, offsetting the $100,000 deficit. This allowed EMS to request the minimum amount of $14 for the CSA 36, maintaining a small contingency fund of approximately $90,000, which can be used for non-budgeted unforeseen items, such as additional ambulance coverage, supplies and equipment for new policies or procedures or emergency disaster responses. The CSA 36 partially covers the cost of our EMS budget, including expenditure, expenditures for advanced life support, which is the paramedic services. Other revenues for EMS include the MADI funds, a contract we have with Hollister Hills, funds from the HPP, which is the Hospital Preparedness Program Grant, and a fee schedule that was implemented two years ago, um, charging EMTs, paramedics for recertification, applications, and ambulance uh, provider fees. We are requesting, um, again, the $14 assessment rate, which is no change from previous years due to the savings we described. We have had an increase of over 24% in our call volume for 911 calls. We have been analyzing our um, call volume on a monthly basis. We are at that point where we're going to need to look at a third ambulance. We have a response time compliance of 94.91%, which is outstanding and we are um, working with three transport providers that are now approved in the county. One just recently signed a contract with Hazel Hawkins to transport patients out of the <coughs> facility into nursing homes, a higher level of care, or to their homes, their nursing homes. That's my report. Um, so with that, uh, we'd love to hear from the public, from, from the board, any questions and answer them. We're very, very happy that we were able to keep the benefit assessment at its minimum level and to continue to provide this service for the community. Um, like I said, if there's any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Are there any questions from any um, members of the board? Yes, uh, Supervisor Barrios. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, wonderful job. It's always good to hear that costs are being kept down as much as possible, and you're at the minimum, so that that is very good work. Uh, on the 90,000 contingency fund that you have, do you establish it as a percentage of your total budget, or is it how do you, how do you arrive at that to make sure that you have enough to cover um, non you know planned costs? So as far as we're aware of, there's no recommend, recommendation for what that contingency amount should be. Um, 
we, we basically came up with that number based on what we already had in our fund balance, our contingency balance, um, as well as leaving the, uh, C, uh, the benefit assessment at the same cost. Our, our number one goal was to have our income match our expenditures, which we were able to do. Um, we didn't have enough time to analyze whether we should have more or should have less, but because the, we were able to have the, the budget balanced, um, we feel confident that this should at least be enough for us to, um, to make it through this next fiscal year while we continue to determine what a good, good amount to uh, maintain is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chair. Thank you for your question. Supervisor De La Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, trying to find the number. You said you were 97% of the calls were within the, the guidelines of meeting the time frame? And 94%. 94%. Yes. Um, I was wondering, so what I like to see, and I'm going to be selfish here, what I like to see, you know, a chart and, and you know, because if the, min if the minimum requirement is, say, you know, four minutes to reach a house mm -hmm. to provide a, are you doing it at three, three minutes and 56 seconds and is that because of strategically what, what the Allen, 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 sorry, elements are at, for example, on the west side of Hollister, about 10 years ago, I used to complain to, to, to this department that the services was not being provided as fast as on the other side of Hollister. So I want to make sure it's a fair distribution and where the, they're located, it reaches its maximum lowest time arrival at a certain location. Sure. We are within the state required compliance well, see, times. I don't want to hear that. I, I don't want to hear that. Well, they're set according to urban, rural, wilderness, and remote wilderness. So the time structure changes as we go out. And I have a county map that I've included in the plan. Um, and within the urban time, which is 10 minutes or less, and because we have an ambulance placed at each end, we have one in San Juan Batista and one here in Hollister, they are able to meet those requirements and far less than the required yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah, um, I would like to I would like to see that at a sure. different time, not today, because sure. of time constraint. I'd like to see that and then have a, you know, afforded about 10 minutes conversation mm -hmm. time so we can talk about Happy that. Happy to do that. Yeah, because you're always, not you, but the department always gives me, we meet the state minimum requirement, we're within the guidelines, and I go, I don't want to hear that because for someone who has a heart attack, who's going through a heart attack, 10 seconds can make a difference. Sure. Mm -hmm. And where you're located can make a big difference. And I've always complained, I always I want to see the numbers, and I continue to fight for the West Side Halser. That's just my nature, mm -hmm. where I grew up at. I'm going to continue. And I know in the CSA uh, report, I believe, response zones and times is attachment E. Correct. Yeah. Right, and we can absolutely bring uh, a more detailed report back to you. The other thing to keep in mind is these, these response times and response zones are specifically looking at their ambulances. All of our fire personnel are trained EMTs. Oftentimes they do arrive on scene first. Um, and are able to provide that immediate emergency care before the transporting agency can get there. And that's kind of what we've been struggling with is we're at this teetering point where we need to decide if we need that third ambulance so we can provide an even faster response time, but can our privately contracted ambulance service um, survive financially without us supplementing them with the public money? Um, and that's what we're continuing to look at carefully. We have you know, the Dell Webb community coming in, and that might be what pushes us over the edge to need that third ambulance. And that'll benefit the entire county um, uh, just by adding it on. And we do have three ambulances uh, on a regular basis on the weekends as well, which help bring the call volume down. There's ambulances dedicated to standby events at uh, Hollister Hills at the GP track. So that helps uh, lessen the burden on the system. But um, we absolutely welcome sitting down with you, Supervisor De La Cruz, and going over some firm numbers so that you can see the data, the raw data right in front of you. Yeah, and, and it could be just for my satisfac satisfaction that, oh, you're doing a good job. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, any other questions or comments? Mr. Bertella. Yeah, uh, and uh, Supervisor De La Cruz uh, hit on the point where I wanted to kind of touch on uh, as we uh, watched the uh, total EMS calls kind of move up uh, over over time and and we haven't really hit our housing you know growth 
that uh, I, I think the county and, and, and the city have approved yet. And so where are CD's numbers and that threshold for that third ambulance mm -hmm. uh, will be needed probably maybe sooner than what we think. Mm -hmm. And I've always advocated that uh, perhaps, you know, in this Union Road area, San Juan Oaks area, that a third station would be, um, that would be the optimum area to co contemplate that. That said, what part of this budget is the 90,000 kind of, can we use any of the, these uh, CSA 36 monies for capital type of improvements and start developing a, a capital reserve with it? And because we're in need of facility and equipment or, you know, subsidize the ambulance maybe a short time until they have the call volume that sustains it. In, in the past, we have used the CSA money to uh, subsidize the ambulance provider. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how long ago that was. Um, but it, it, to my knowledge, we can use it to with capital improvement projects as long as it's related to EMS. You know, it can't be used for the sheriff's department or um, the fire department per se, but if it does benefit the overall EMS system, then, um, then that is an option. And that's also that's something we had been debating about when we – uh, we're putting this report together is should we raise the benefit assessment amount um, to help grow that cushion so that we could start to make have these conversations but we don't think we're quite at that time yet um, but there's room to grow which is what's good we have we have that uh, contingency amount and uh, we are you know preparing pretty much daily monitoring what's going on to uh, come back to the board and uh, possibly, you know, dip into it to see if we can provide a better service for the community. Right. And it might be something to include in next year's report as far as uh, a vision, you know, uh, going into the future or some sort of long-term uh, planning uh, that we should have as our community grows. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other you did, you're doing a great job. Thank you very much for a great report. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, members of the board? No, I, they answered my questions. Oh. Thank you. Mr. Sorry, Chair, uh, in lines of Supervisor Patel's comments about the, was it $14? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll be the first one to tell you, you know, lower that baby down. But, you know, in light of what Marty said out there, nothing's free anymore. Uh, I would prefer that we have money set aside for those projects. We know it's going to happen. We know Seminoles County is going to grow. And we know we're going to have a hard time finding funds for public services. And the public thinks that, you know, a good portion of the public thinks that, you know, services should be provided to them at no cost based on what they pay on their property taxes, but yet we only get, what, 11 cents to the dollar? Mm -hmm. Not even enough to cover the expenses that we provide to the service. So, I mean, I'm a little surprised you're coming at 14. I accept it's a good thing, but next year, let's think about big picture, global. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, at this time, I'll open up for um, uh, the public. For any comments? See now, I'll bring it back to the board for a decision. I'll, I'll move to accept the uh, annual report for CSA 36 and benefit assessment uh, <coughs> charges for, uh, set there forth and, and authorize the chair to sign. Is there a resolution to it though? And move to approve resolution 2016. 55. 55. Is it, I'll second it, but under the call of the motion, shouldn't it say, shouldn't it say a, adopt uh, county council or approve? Adopt. <laughs> Thank you. I'll second it. For clarity, the motion is to adopt the resolution, <laughs> not to approve the resolution? Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. So all those in favor of adopting a resolution. <laughs> Please say aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Thank you. Oh, Thank God, God it's summer's it. coming. You, Otherwise, I'd kill him. Summer's <laughs> coming around the corner. <laughs> guys are getting tired. Hey, do you guys want to take a break? Do you want to take a break? I'm good. You good? Thank you. Okay. So, do um, you guys want to take a break or no? Keep going? Okay. <laughs> we'll move on to item number <coughs> 36. This is coming out of Health and Human Services Agency. Uh, Mr. Ridings Ward. Good morning. 
So this, uh, let me first give you a little background. <clears throat> as, as you know, we are in the process of, rec of recruitment for a uh, permanent public health officer. Uh, we had a contract for an interim public health officer with Dr. Ira LaBelle, who a few weeks ago uh, passed away. Uh, so uh, we went out and to see if we can find another interim while we're still recruiting uh, and came forward with Dr. Marty Finsterscheib, uh, who's a board certified uh, pediatrician, holds a master's degree in public health, uh, is board certified in public health and preventive medicine, uh, was the health officer in Santa Clara County, uh, is now the retired health officer from Santa Clara County, and in retirement um, has agreed to come back and work with us under a contract for the next six months uh, <coughs> while we continue uh, recruitment for a, a, a permanent public health officer. Uh, my understanding is we do have <coughs> uh, interviews uh, set up in their near future to consider some candidates. Uh, but today, uh, your action will be to approve a contract uh, uh, for a six month period of time uh, for an interim public health officer and appoint Dr. Marty Finsterscheib uh, to that position. And he is here today uh, to answer any questions or uh, to give you any background uh, information that you uh, may desire. And thank you for uh, the introduction. Um, are there any questions or comments from members of the board on this item? Mr. De La Cruz. Yes. Uh, Jim, it says here that he'll be providing 20 hours per week. Uh, if, th that's the contract, yes. So if we need more hours, there's a way to facilitate? We could do that, but we're not anticipating more hours based upon the experience that we've had with interim public health officers in the past. Okay, now has Hazel Hawkins been involved in the discussions on? We have discussed with uh, Hazel Hawkins and local uh, physicians, uh, you know, their ability to do these things. Um, and, uh, and, and Dr. Fenster, Fenstersheib, um, you know, fits the bill for us right now. Okay, perfect, thank you. Thank you, Mr. And a other questions or comments? Open up to the public for questions or comments. See none, I'll bring it back to the board for a decision. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve said contract. A second. <coughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. There is a resolution oh. adopt, uh, attached. I, so I, oh. do, the motion do we to need to adopt, adopt the resolution? Adopt the resolution or, or or approve it. <laughs> to approve the contract? <laughs> It's true what they say, right? It yes, tastes it is. bad when you take your own medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion we adopt resolution 56. 2016-56, is there a second? second? I'll second it. Okay, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries 5-0. And with the board's indulgence, I'd, I'd like to introduce Dr. Marty Fenstersheim and see if he has any comments for you. Not really, just good morning, and I'm really happy to be here. I thought I would kind of retire from my job. I was a uh, county health officer in Santa Clara for 20 years, and um, that was fun. And I was looking for a next chapter, and this is my next chapter for now, and I'm happy to help out. And I know what it's like not to have a health officer for a while, so whatever I can do to help out San Benito, I'm most happy to do that. I live in San Jose. I'm not too far away. Great. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, moving on to item 37. This is coming out of the Resource Management Agency, uh, Mr. Barnes. Good morning again. I am uh, pleased to bring you uh, a private consultant, Gary Coates, who will make a presentation to you on the south side, small S, small P, specific plan study area. Uh, there's a lot of development activity or interest in development down there. Uh, Mr. Coates has been working with the development community rather extensively and has an update for you. This is an information item only. Both I and Mr. Coates will be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Can we find this on the screen or you want to put it on 
Yeah, that's. I think if we just. Think we'll just where did this go? Uh, yeah. You got it. Can help you. Touch. Appreciate that. No telling what I would do. <coughs> that's it, right? Perfect. There. So what I will do with that, we can go from there. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. <coughs> Good morning, uh, members of the board. Gary Coates here on behalf of the uh, Southside Road Stakeholders Group, which is the group of not only developers but also property owners within the area. Um, as Mr. Barnes has said, we've uh, kind of embarked upon a, a unique process that we're going through right now, one that the county, I don't believe, has uh, experienced. So it's we're kind of feeling it out as we've gone along. Uh, I've done a similar such project in the uh, county of Monterey, which involved uh, all the South County cities and LAFCO and the county in creating a memorandum of agreement for the processing and moving forth with annexations, developments, et cetera, within Monterey County. We're taking that experience and some of those ideas and trying to bring them back into the county. What we've done is, uh, at, as you remember, at, at the desire of the county, we were looking at this area and saying there's a lot of attention. There's a lot of uh, development activity that is looking in the area. And instead of having everyone just do an independent uh, process and evaluation of their own project, we should collectively look at how all of these fit together so that services, who you've heard today, health services, uh, schools, uh, ability for public infrastructure, transportation, all of these issues, we wanted to be able to incorporate them and look at what they would be on the regional value and regional basis and implement them on the local or individual project basis. So our charge at this point was then to, first of all, identify what is the, bind the boundary, the site boundary, and I'll show you a few maps as we go on here. Our first was to identify the boundary. The second was the goal not to have a further environmental evaluation. We've just finished a general plan amendment, done a very detailed, the county has done an incredibly good job with public input with respect to that general plan and the environmental documentation. Now our goal is to use that material as the base and build upon it to, rate, to uh, create the conformance requirements for these projects. So how do we do that? What's the format that we use? We looked at different types of uh, studies and we found that our recommendation to the commission and the commission at this point has supported our recommendation is to do an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding. And what that Memorandum of Understanding will do is it will implement the general plan policies and goals. It'll also do that on an individual basis while at the same time addressing the regional needs that would occur by multiple projects developing. And the last, the last uh, product is we really want to create a workbook that's going to come out of this project so that someone walks in the door to your planning department, they'll be able to hold a document, hand it to them and say, here's how you go through the process, here are the steps. It'll make it, we hope, easier on, for staff as well as the public as well as property owners that may not be sophisticated in this process to take it through. So the goal is not to create a brand new step, but to consolidate what you've already done and put it into a format that we can use. The boundary that we looked at in the, in the uh, study is basically Southside Road is the western boundary, northern boundary is the city limit boundary of city of Hollister, the eastern boundary is Highway 25, the southern boundary is the southern property line of the Lima property just before, just north of Trespinos. One of the things that when, when we do this study, we're going to be talking to every one of the agencies. We're going to be talking to the city of Hollister as an example. From Union Road up to the existing uh, city limit line, there is a general plan policy which calls out for a specific plan or further detailed study in the city of Hollister. So we've set a meeting up with the city of Hollister. We're going to find out exactly what they want try to incorporate their needs into our program as well so that it all becomes part of one document. We're going to be doing that with the Transit District, with LAFCO, with the Service District, Sunny Slope, CAL FIRE, all of the districts as we go through. And as an example, these are the property owners that are out there today and also some of the developments. And you can see uh, who they are in this process and where development activities are being proposed. 
we've actually internally in our group are looking at separating uh, two types of areas or two types of um, status and priority for the projects. One are projects that have applications on file with the county. They already have something to you. They already are in the process of either preparing an environmental document or they're reviewing through staff for completeness of application. Those you see in the yellow color up on the map. The blue area are projects that have expressed interest in developing but do not have an application but are in the planning process stage at this point doing their own studies to create a project to move forward. And those are the blue ones? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Then what we're going to be doing, and these are just a couple example slides for you. These are the public facilities within the area that we're talking about, our study area. They are fire stations, school sites, there'll be uh, police stations. We're going to be looking at those and seeing what impact will the region project have in this area? Will there be a need for an additional uh, fire station site? Will there be a need for an ad additional school site? We've already met with uh, the Southside School District. We're meeting with the Hollister School District. We know that the projects as they are presented, and we'll create a generated number of, of homes anticipated, will cause the need for additional school saying, services. Yeah, so how do we meet those school services? Do we do them because we need land to expand the one school district of Southside Road? If that's the case, then these people would work with one of the property owners that has land next to the school, and each one of them would be then contributing to solve the need for land to give to the school to develop. So it's a regional solution internally within our own. We've already started that process. We know one of the adjacent property owners, and that person is willing to look at giving the land up and the owners are willing to look at them paying that person for the development rights that they would give up. There may be a need to go further north in the Hollister School District and preserve a site. If that is the case, the same process would occur. Owners in the area would then create a fund to help separate to pay for land that would be taken from some individual uh, to be able to provide a school site in the future. So again, this is the ability to work collectively as we're going through the process. This is another example. This is your, your parks and your recreation element in your general plan. Big thing in this situation is the, uh, the regional park that goes along the river coming down. This goes right along our whole project's boundary, the, eastern, the western boundary. So how do we then collectively on a regional basis ensure that each one of these projects understand, recognize, and dedicate or reserve areas for that parkway system? so it's done. But it doesn't stop there. Besides that, we need to then look internally within the plan and see how do we get non-vehicular access over to this parkway. Uh, it's great to have the parkway, it's nice, but we want to have people within the communities that are to be developed to walk, to be able to ride their bike, to get down to this area and not have to get into a car, go down, park, and then use the facility. So it becomes a neighborhood use but it also becomes a regional benefit as we go through the process. There will be further parks within the developments themselves. Uh, we don't want to do pocket parks. Pocket parks. We've looked at that and the cost of maintenance and how you uh, preserve those. But at the same time, we need to have local neighborhood parks that people can, during the day, take kids down to play. They can be safe. They can be closer to their homes. So that's the balancing act that we look at. You and your general plan have policies that set forth how do we get there. So this plan will then incorporate those concepts as well. Then the outcome of this process as we go through is to create a matrix compliance checklist as we go through this. This is just one page. There's a total in this uh, of our original research of 13 pages that go into this. We've taken each element within your general plan, and this is just a first rush through. Your staff has already started this matrix type evaluation, so we're going to be working with them to coordinate the document. But you'll see names across the top. Those are the property owner's names. We'll go down and be checking off to compliance or non-compliance. So when someone comes in, they'll be able to look and say, gee, I have a policy under the open space and conservation that requires me to do X. Did I do it? There's no check next to it. I need to look then how do I do that? 
each project may wish to accomplish it in different ways. It may be funds, it may be dedication, it may be contribution to another fund. There's different ways it can be met. This will merely identify the need to evaluate it and see what that way is. Then out of that, we've set up a schedule. And this is a schedule that tentatively right now, we know that there, this is going to stretch a little bit as they always do because we're going to be involving more community meetings. We're going to be coming back to your board with meetings. Um, we're going to be doing this in a very open atmosphere to get comments from the public as we go through. We've been able to contact all but about two of the property owners within this whole area. And we've received a very positive uh, feedback from all those property owners that they want to be involved. They want to know what's happening because it affects their property. So that's our responsibility and our charge. Uh, my responsibility at this point as I've been accepted by the group to be the spokesperson for the group and to conduct the study and to prepare the documentation that will be coming back. We're going to be doing that in conjunction with your staff. The commission was very clear to us at their last meeting saying that this was to be a county document eventually to work with staff to incorporate them, which we indeed will. Your planning commission has appointed an ad hoc committee. That that ad hoc committee is to the members of the commission. We'll be incorporating them in our meetings as well. So we'll be meeting on a weekly basis with the stakeholders, and then as we go through, we'll be meeting with your staff and with the ad hoc committee as we proceed in this process. So we, today, we wanted to bring this to you, give you an update, answer questions, uh, any feedback you'd like to uh, provide us. But this is the process that the commission has endorsed us to proceed on, and we're off and running in the process. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, for the opportunity to present this. I'll turn this over to uh, Brent now, and, and if there's anything that we can answer, we're happy to do that. Certainly, and thank you for your presentation. Um, and at this time, I'll ask members of the board if there are any questions or comments. I do have a question, and the, the question actually is for Brent, because this is really good. I, I really appreciate that people have come together, stakeholders, and it sounds like pretty much everybody was on board. So they all have a um, they all have a say in how to, how moving how we move forward, but Brent, it's only as good as our commitment as a county as an agency to commit staff to making sure that this is actually being followed. Sure, absolutely. Uh, how what is the plan for that, Mr. Cummings? Uh huh. What we are going to be doing, for, I forgot to do okay. this. Um, we're, we've prepared for each one of the commissioners, and you will be receiving one as well. There's actually going to be a, a notebook that's going to be expanded as we go through. That notebook is going to have the variety of different sections in it that will then complete this document as we go through. That document is then going to be worked with, with your staff to involve them in it. We're going to be functionally doing the grunt work on all of this, okay. but the review of it to ensure that it's in compliance will be done by your staff. Our goal is to provide, frankly, the arms and the legs to run this around and do it, and then to look at staff to give us the guidance as we go through and the commission and the board. Ultimately, there will be a full booklet that will each member will have, you will have as a review, as a final document as we go through. We will be coming back to you also periodically based on staff's recommendation to give you these updates and tell you where we are in the process. Okay. Hopefully that answers uh, the question. It does answer my question. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You, Mr. Chairman. Thank Perfect you question. Thank you very much. Two things I'd like to, to um, call your attention to again. I think they're very important. This is essentially a roadmap. And first of all, I want to congratulate and, and, and commend Gary for his work on this. This is fabulous. If I were the, the consultant doing this, this is exactly what I would have would have been doing the exact approach so it's perfect for us um, I want to stress two things this is a roadmap for us bad pun intended and it's not a binding document but it's a guidance document in the same way that the general plan is and and as Gary mentioned the um, notebook and this matrix are going to be our working documents as projects come forward the point I want to make is that this is not granting an approval 
of any particular project. Each project is going to <coughs> proceed individually at their own pace through the development review process, the environmental review process, and with their own unique environmental documents. So this will provide guidance to the to the staff as we as we review projects and it will provide guidance to the uh, CEQA consultant as they prepare environmental documents for the for the projects. I have a follow-up question, Mr. Chair, if Brother I could. Bios, yeah. Okay, so this is more of a roadmap. It's a guiding guiding tool, yes, not the binding <coughs> document. So then the MOU will be the binding document uh, so that we make sure that, uh, uh, that they agree to the... Council can perhaps address this as well. The MOU is a memorandum of understanding. It's not a contract. But each of the each of the developers, if I understand correctly, and, and the participating owners will sign in the MOU and agree to provide to uh, abide by the, um, the provisions of that MOU. So it's a place to start the negotiation. Now, something may change that may, could either be unique to the property that comes up that was not anticipated in the MOU or conditions could change over five years, whatever time, you know, until something comes forward. <clears throat> so there may be, we may have to go back and rethink the MOU at that point, um, but it's a, it's a place to start the conversation rather just, than just holding up the, the general plan land use map and saying, here, this is, abide by this it's a lot lot more guidance yeah because ultimately what we wanted to do is we wanted to get to a point where we would look at this globally you know regionally and and have a good plan for yes. all of that development but at the same time we didn't want to put added you know Burden. time right. and cost right. to the developer because that obviously you know then it wouldn't be fair so do you think that this addresses both those uh, absolutely ideas that absolutely we we're looking Again, for. Each, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay, but this is what we were ultimately wanting to to reach, is yeah. that kind of end. I believe it accomplishes both goals. It's a regional look, as, as Mr. Coates mentioned, it's schools, it's infrastructure, it's roadways, the uh, parks, the, right. everything that's sort of extra development, bigger than a single development, but it's also allowing each of the projects to go forward at their own pace. Uh, okay. It's the best of both worlds. And it's not something that we could have done as staff. So it's a, a really innovative, cool idea. It is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. De La Cruz. Uh, thank you. Just one question right now. I might have other ones uh, later. You, re you, me you, men you mentioned about at their own pace. Does the value of money becomes an issue? Sure. That's a, that's a good question. I mean, so, so let's take a hy hypothetical example. Um, the... the We've talked about a particular project, a, a design concept for a roundabout, a roadway roundabout at the intersection of Enterprise and Southside Road. Roundabout is a uh, round intersection that would replace either a signalized intersection or a four-way stop there. The developers in that immediate area would participate in the construction of that. Is there a more detailed map? It's one more. Okay, let's, let's go here. So the, I can't reach it. <laughs> <coughs> I need to be taller. The, the developers in that immediate area would, according to the traffic models, contribute a certain amount of traffic to that intersection, and that's how, how business is usually done in the traffic impact analysis. So they would then participate proportionally for example, if there were a total of 1,000 trips coming through that intersection and your project had 420 of those and my project had 317, we would participate in 42% or whatever I said and 31.7% and 30, of that intersection. And, and that's how, so we would, we the county would take the, the um, probably build the intersection and hold in trust the uh, the cost of that and and be reimbursed by the developers as they came in, so it's essentially a community facilities district, uh, and there are a number of ways to structure how we actually uh, create that funding mechanism. And it might be different for schools, for for uh, roads, for parks, for uh, sewage sewage lines. Uh, I mean, a whole a whole different array of of approaches for that. Okay. I could have used that, couldn't I? You could. Well, 
Oh, Any other questions, comments, from the board? Mr. Patella? Yeah, uh, first, I want to congratulate you, Mr. Coates, on uh, pulling this uh, together and really thank the property owners mm -hmm. and, and other projects for coming together because uh, when I it came to light to me, I was very, very concerned about the, uh, the individual projects and how they were moving forward. And my experience has been that it, the end result is never what we all hope for is, as far as establishing a, a cohesive community. And, you know, we were able to, you know, bring you uh, on board. And I, I've had some quite a few conversations with my planning um, commissioner. And uh, it, it's great, great progress. And, and now we, I think we have a good comprehensive approach to this area and uh, when the developers are all said and 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 done it's to be a nice community I really see that uh, in the future and I, I just want to applaud the effort by the property owners mm -hmm. um, and the, the staff and uh, you know and hopefully it, it, it's, we have a successful outcome and you know one of the things that I hope is the end result is you know uh, the financial uh, fiscal neutrality uh, you know by looking at it more in a comprehensive approach it's a be uh, a, a whole lot better uh, financially for the everybody in that area so keep up the good work Right. Yeah. And I, you know, I absolutely, um, you know, uh, want to echo uh, what was just said, because we, you know, just uh, a couple months ago, we thought that we were going to have this huge issue on our hands. Um, and I as well want to thank the property owners and all those that are involved. I want to thank staff. Um, you know, obviously, the one thing that we heard, uh, you know, um, the last few months is time. You know, time is of the essence. We have our projects they are ready to go. And we were faced with possibly making a decision to do this new uh, study area, which would take a lot of time. And this looks like um, is probably our best, uh, you know, um, we're putting our best foot forward with this, you know, idea. And I think this is fantastic. Supervisor Munzer. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chair. I, Gary, I just want to thank you for stepping up and, and pulling all this together. I, too, want to make sure that the projects that are out there that have submitted applications they can move forward in a timely manner and i certainly appreciate your work in in, in this and your efforts thank you very much uh, mr chair um Fred de la Cruz. So, Brent, i guess it's more for you brent um I'm trying to be diplomatic as much as i can about <laughs> this one it's okay it, it's gonna be at the end of the day it's gonna be a global project right I know you mentioned that any individual can go at their own pace. I'm more concerned from the the impact fees, the development agreements. They're all going to be fair. There's they're, um, like the affordable housing component, the, the roads. I mean, Supervisor Patel and I serve on the impact fees. We got to move fast on that, Anthony. We got to just move <laughs> fast on it. Yes. Uh, this. I mean, we got to charge what has to be charged. Yeah. I mean, and that's I guess that's more of my comment than anything else thank you for the comment I'm I'm moving forward very aggressively on on uh, working up the the foundation for the impact fees and I intend to work with Louie and, and other staff to make that happen on a very expedited basis because you're right it, it's critical I think to the to the little bit broader comment that this provides an opportunity for a much more equity, <coughs> equitable distribution of costs and benefits <clears throat> and by that I mean let's take affordable housing for example if it's difficult impossible or um, unwanted to provide uh, affordable housing for a particular development project there's the opportunity to move that requirement if you will to another project a more appropriate site a different way of participating in that program so that it still stays within this region and accomplishes the same goal but perhaps not in the way that uh, it would have or might not have uh, for an individual development project. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. At this time, I'll open up to the public for comment.
While Mr. Richmond comes up, I want to point out one more thing. We will be coming back to the board perhaps monthly with a, a brief update on this. Sounds Maybe good. not as long as the presentation here, but at least a, a quick update. Uh, that would be great. Good morning, Richmond again from Hollis. I'd like to chime in, and uh, uh, I come. I criticize a lot of things, and I want to join uh, members of the board, and I want to join uh, everybody in saying, wow, I am relieved because uh, having sat through the Planning Commission meetings concerning this area and the fact that we were doing a whole bunch of developing, uh, I would say, uncoordinated developing. I call it, uh, you know, everybody's familiar with the term urban sprawl. This would be suburban sprawl or rural sprawl, you name it. But that's the way it comes about. This is now the equivalent of uh, basically uh, a, a massive planning project, and that's the way it ought to be. So the other, for um, it was obvious uh, right at the beginning that um, the other method we were using uh, left enormous holes in the entire region. Uh, nobody, everybody's pointing at each other or who's going to have the school. Everybody's pointing at each other on which road ends where. And that, that's an impossible situation. That's uh, the equivalent of, uh, of um, what we have in so many old cities and old places where, where we didn't do any planning. Uh, this should serve as a good um, um, template for your, all your other regions. This should not be on its own. It's obvious to me that these individual developments, unless that are that are less than uh, a moon size, where they can do it all of themselves, have to be coordinated because there's all these um, support items. So uh, it's hard for me to believe even that you've done so much work on this in such a short time, because it wasn't that long ago we were saying, okay, let's start. Uh, so I'm impressed. I'm uh, not only am I impressed, I'm favorably impressed, which is <laughs> one of the two options. <laughs> so I want to I want to credit everybody involved and uh, thank uh, the people who did the work. Thank the people who made the the good decision. And I think uh, uh, you should not um, should not let the good decision go to waste. To make sure you uh, move forward with it, and also make sure you think about it for all the other areas uh, that you've got outlined because they're all going to have the exact same issues unless it's one enormous project. So I thank you. Thank you for your time to let me speak on it and uh, congratulations to everybody involved. Any other um, members of the public wish to provide comments now is the time to do so. See none, I'll bring it back to the board. I know that this is just a, an update. So again, um, excellent work. And uh, I think you guys uh, have really hit this one out of the park. I think that, uh, you know, for all involved, from us supervisors to property owner, to current residents and future residents, this is the best outcome that we could have hoped for at this point. Um, so moving on, we'll move to item 38, uh, which is out of the Health and Human Services Agency, Mr. Uh, Ridings Ward. What he said. You're out. This is yeah. your right. So good morning, still. Uh, this is our uh, monthly update on uh, homeless issues. And uh, we have put it into a PowerPoint presentation for you today. Um, I have Enrique here to help me out and Brent to also help me out as we uh, move through this. Um, first of all, I, I, I want to say that one of the things that we started earlier this year is to begin to talk about a community collaborative on, on dealing with issues around low-income folks and homeless individuals in our community. <clears throat> uh, so we know that everybody, whether you're low-income or not, that you know your lives are impacted by a lot of social and economic conditions. Uh, and that the best way for us to address those uh, individually or as a community is to kind of look at them in a, in a whole person kind of concept. Um, so there's a growing interest uh, at all levels of government uh, to better coordinate uh, social services, behavioral health, health services, public health and, and the safety 
and also to better work on a collaborative basis uh, with uh, community partners that we have uh, who are also willing to step forward uh, and work with us on some of these issues. <clears throat> uh, we've talked to you before about housing first. Um, and that seems to be uh, the model that is gaining the most success across the country. Utah adopted a housing first strategy several years ago and have reduced their homeless population uh, in that period of time, according to reports, uh, by 94%. Uh, and have gotten people into uh, <coughs> home housing uh, with supportive services with a focused strategy on how uh, you begin to help people access health education and employment services. <clears throat> so uh, I'd like to ask uh, Enrique to come up and give you a brief homeless service update on where we are on these items that you see uh, on the screen here. So just to give a quick update with the 2014 CDBG grant, uh, we have submitted all of the special conditions items that we are required to submit to the state for final consideration and approval. Our goal is that those items be approved by the state. Uh, more specifically, they wanted a revised uh, budget, a revised scope of work, the forms for envir environmental clearance conditions. So all the items were submitted. We're still waiting for a response. And once we do, that uh, triggers the 2016 CDBG grant in meeting the 50% uh, rule. So at the moment, we are moving forward um, with that in mind, with the application, we held our first public hearing last week, last Tuesday, I believe, in the evening at the VETS building. And we had about 15, 16, 17 community residents that attended. They gave some good input on what they consider their needs are. And for the most part, they, they are in support of uh, the application moving forward. Um, so that is moving forward. Um, we're just hoping that the, all the items are approved to meet that 50%. The uh, ESG grant is an application that we just submitted, <clears throat> Emergency Solutions Grant. And the goal under this grant is to help with the operations for next year's warming shelter. Um, we plan to have those funds uh, in order to operate the shelter. We applied for, I believe it was $200,000 or 225, something like that. Um, so the AHEAD grant is another grant that we uh, submitted uh, uh, to help with uh, future services uh, relating to homeless community, and that was in the amount of $50,000. And that's, that's my update relating to these uh, items. Any questions? Any questions from members of the board? Yeah. <clears throat> OK, okay. and he, he did skip over the CMSE pilot project. That particular pilot project will uh, be opened up in late July. Uh, it's basically a non-competitive application process uh, with CMSP, which is our, um, uh, an agency that we belong to for uh, low-income medical uh, services. Um, it will result in $75,000 a year for a period of three years uh, that we can uh, can, you know that we can add to the mix of things that we're working on there uh, whole person care I'm going to just spend a few minutes on this uh, we talked a little bit about uh, the concept of whole person care uh, we were in the process of applying for some federal funds uh, for whole person care that would have uh, uh, focused on homeless community people who are at risk of homelessness and high community service users. Uh, 
Uh, we would have used this particular model. This is the model that we were looking at, which says what you do is you do an individual assessment on people uh, uh, with a, a team of people that works with them, and you, then you bring agencies together to try to work on those issues. Uh, and uh, that, you know, so that process was going forward. Um, we discovered uh, last week that, the, that we just simply could not meet uh, some of the state and federal requirements for cash flow, uh, you know, for the requirement for non-federal uh, uh, match dollars. Uh, we just simply could not get that done and meet that requirement by June 30th. So we have uh, since then pulled this application uh, if in the process there is an additional round of funding, uh, we will take a look at it uh, again. And then, um, but on the other hand, um, funding is not everything that drives all decisions. Sometimes the concept is important. And we're going to continue discussing the concept of whole person care with our community partners and see if there's a way that we can begin to think about how we can do things in a better way, um, whether we have access to federal funding or not. Uh, and so I, I really want the board to understand. A lot of work went into that. We got right up to it. We didn't think we could uh, you know, meet all the requirements. And so we, we made a decision at this point in time not to move forward with an application. Any questions on that? Any questions? Okay. Economic development. Uh, there are kind of four areas that we've been talking about. High-tech recycle center, food processing center, food preparation and management center, and a home services training center. Those are just kind of broad concepts that we kind of want to move forward with in terms of uh, economic development. But in particular, we want to talk with you about our trip to Indianapolis, Indiana. And I'm going to ask uh, Brent to come up and do this portion of the presentation. Are the photos in here? Yes. Perfect. Okay. And it clicks off of that too. Yeah. Okay. So, I happened to, just happened to be driving across the country a month ago and um, ended up in Indianapolis by arrangement and met Jim there. Uh, you authorized him to travel out of state to to go visit this facility. This is a high-tech, high if you will, um, recycling center that takes all kinds of recyclable materials and some that are not so recyclable and um, uses a low-tech process, a high-tech and a low-tech process to sort them into uh, commodities that can be sold or recycled in, into uh, uh, additional products. Uh, for example, the gold off of circuit boards from PCs and televisions and so on is a, obviously a valuable thing. And these folks extract it and um, with computerized technology and sort it into uh, waste bins and then sell it off on the open market. And that's a good part of where they, where they make their money. But the important part for us and the reason that we re really wanted to look at it was that it was the component of... <coughs> the labor force that's involved here, and that is that it's largely a work release program. Um, we envisioned that that could work as a model here and also as a training center for uh, folks with a lesser amount of skills and get them into um, mainstream kinds of jobs, not just shoveling commodities onto a conveyor belt as you'll see in some of these slides, but training as forklift operators and machine operators and, and elsewhere. Uh, for example, the, the, manage, the floor manager for this, this center, which is 80,000 square feet inside a building, the floor manager, the technical manager, was, I talked to him for quite a while, was a homeless guy, came out of the service and became homeless and was court ordered to live under a bridge. And then he hooked up with these, with these folks and proceeded through the, the uh, chain of command, if you will, to become one of the, probably the second level manager in the entire facility. 
So it's quite a career ladder, a good, a good success story, and uh, uh, a, a vision for the folks that, that work there. They have a path forward. So not only does it work on a recycling basis, it diverts stuff from our landfill, which we're not doing a very good job of right now, um, creates a, an income stream, although that, that's at least the third goal of this. The goal is to break even, but also to create a, a work path for, for these folks. And so these are just some, some images from inside the facility. It's not uh, with the side, aside from one machine that sorts the materials automatically, at the end of that conveyor belt, there's a computer-guided uh, sorting machine that, that pulls apart the, the various crushed bits of plastic and, and metal and, and uh, sorts them into the right bins. Um, it's not a very high-tech operation and can be done on a, on a fairly low budget. The, the uh, balers that were in the, the previous picture are about $2,500 on the, on the used market. So we're, we're thinking that this would be a really interesting project because it meets a lot of goals with the, for the city, for the county, for the general community. Um, it, it's, it meets t uh, Jim's goals, it meets Ted Baran's goals and the sheriff's goals for, for uh, uh, pulling folks out of uh, um, incarceration and giving them a path. It meets our goals as integrated waste for um, recycling facility, for a recycling facility and recycling materials and and diverting stuff from the land use so that it can be functionally reused. Um, we're not requesting that you go forward with a specific project today, but we would be very interested in hearing your feedback on this uh, so that we can investigate or not uh, individual sites perhaps uh, um, at various locations in the county and begin to sort of structure a program. The other part of this in this last slide is that it's a training facility as well. <coughs> So this loops right back around to the Homeless Services Center and the other, the other 5,000, 8,000 square feet in the back of the building that we're programming a use for. And this is the kind of operation that might go in there in a building that we already have. That concludes my part of the presentation. So let me uh, just say, uh, in terms of development, we have uh, some consultants, which some of you have met before, uh, they're, they're from an organization called the uh, California Community Economic Development Association. Uh, they were also with us in Indianapolis. They have been integrally involved in this project for the last 10 years. Uh, so if we decide to move forward, part of deciding to move forward is to explore with them uh, the feasibility and funding of uh, uh, such an effort uh, in San Benito County. Uh, I, I specifically asked them in Indianapolis when we were there, I mean, if we were to do something like this, are we in competition with you? And they said no. Okay, we, we welcome these kinds of efforts around the country. Uh, we hope that people can replicate what we're doing. In the United States, we only recycle 6% of these products back into the market and that there's a lot of growth here uh, that we can all uh, share in. So um, questions on that in the trip and those kinds of things? Any or questions we, members of the board? I have a comment, and that is that I absolutely want to encourage us to be, <clears throat> you know, proactive and try something like this. To what extent, I don't know. We're talking a, a pretty huge facility, but the concept is wonderful. It gives people jobs. It brings, you know, it recycles like, uh, like Brent said, and uh, it has a lot of pluses. So I can't imagine not pursuing it, and especially if we, I attended the meeting with, where that organization came in and presented their, uh, their ideas and how it's worked. I would love to connect with them. They're... Um, been very helpful they've been successful they have a history so why not i think we have great opportunity thank you mr chair all right thank you for your comments supervisor patello yeah I, it, my opinion our efforts with the homeless center is not going to be successful 
unless we incorporate all of these aspects. It is to get, help people get off the street, identify their issues, help them with those issues, move them to transitional housing, and and find you know the training uh, to improve their lives and and, and work. Um, I don't know how many of these type of models are in California at this point in time, uh, but obviously in in, in the Apples, uh, it, it's Pete's living underneath a, a bridge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, <coughs> I think San Bernardino County is uniquely positioned um, right now for to promote this and and have public private partnerships uh, and and help a lot of people yeah. and that's so I I'm, I'm very supportive of this and and hopefully um, we'll, we'll be able to take the steps to accomplish it over time Supervisor Munzer thank you mr. chair I too I just want to say this is a great report and if you're looking for um, encouragement to go forward with this you got it from me I think this would be great and definitely encourage you to pursue it um, and and I'm looking forward to hearing back from you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Right, Dale uh, yes, thank you. I, uh, I'll, I'll speak about from the um, the coming out of jail component into work. Uh, it's wonderful to know that there actually might be a program in which people who have a criminal record or felony or just went to jail for just bad luck or for whatever other reasons, once they open that door and they start looking at employment, it's like 99% of the people just shut the door on them. Uh, this will be an opportunity to to build that that <coughs> that concept that they're they're a um, productive member of society instead of going into that path where they'll just you know most likely end up back in jail um, so it's a good thing uh, move forward on it um, the only constructive that I can think about is uh, the use of general fund money if it's not going to be using the energy general fund money then I'm 100% behind it. We, we always assume that. <laughs> we always assume, but not necessarily all the time. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and I just, I do want to say, uh, and, and I know Brent experienced this, when you're on the floor with these gentlemen, uh, they have such pride in what they're doing. Uh, they realize that they are turning their lives around. Now, not all of them you know, are successful, but there's so much hope uh, with those people. It's just, you know, makes you uh, think, you know, you need to do something. So, uh, low-income housing development. Um, the legislature, uh, as they passed the budget, and I understand that the governor signed the budget yesterday, uh, is what I've heard, uh, included a, a provision in the budget called No Place at uh, like home. Uh, uh, basically, what it's done is it repurposes monies from Proposition 63 uh, into a $2 billion fund to construct permanent and supportive housing in California's communities. Uh, we have been having conversations with both CSDC and with CHISBA about, you know, what is the opportunity here for San Benito County in fact, we're meeting with Chisba uh, tomorrow morning uh, to continue those, those kinds of discussions. Um, we hope that, uh, you know, this will give us uh, another avenue uh, uh, in order, uh, you know, to begin to continue the discussion about this continuum of services uh, in the homeless and low-income community. We met recently with the Housing Authority the new executive director, <clears throat> uh, she's dynamite. That's all I gotta say. Uh, she wants to do things with us. Uh, she talked to us about project-based vouchers. She talked to us about priority for homeless and GA people. She wants to help us make things happen uh, in San Benito County. So we're gonna continue to work on that. She's the new executive director of the Santa Cruz San Benito Housing Authority. Yeah, yeah. So she uh, came to our meeting on May the 4th that you were at, 
and then we've followed up with her since then. And she's just terrific. I mean, she's going to be a great addition to what we're trying to do here. Uh, we're continuing discussion with both Cheeseba and CSDC on, you know, things that we can do to work with them uh, to, you know, continue to fill out this continuum. Um, so, and again, we have the community collaborative. The next meeting of the community collaborative will be Monday, uh, July the 11th from 3 to 4.30. Uh, those of you who are on the distribution list from the board will be getting invitations to that uh, meeting. We hope you will be able to be there. Uh, it's important, I think, that we continue this community conversation uh, so that everybody is kind of on the same page uh, as we move forward. So we just want to thank you again. Uh, I picked up a little sign when I was in the state. It said, housing is not homeless. I thought, well, that's pretty obvious, but if that's something that helps us think about things and move forward, then maybe we can use that. Uh, thank you for your time today. If you have any questions, uh, we're here to answer those. And thank you for that uh, um, report, Jim, and that update. At this time, I think I'll open up to the public for any questions or comments. <coughs> See none, I'll bring it back to the board for additional questions or comments. I don't think that it uh, requires any kind of action. It's just a report. Supervisor? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jim, the uh, No Place Like Home yes. funding mechanism, is it yes. still the concept of competitive business, or is it going to be based on population like Prop 63? As, as I read it, and I really have to say I haven't been into the details, I think it's a mixture of both, and there's a strong component of basing it upon population, but you do have to apply. You have to take the action to do something about it. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, is there any way we can reach out to, 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 the, um, to the state on um, getting a peak a poke at the guidelines so we can prepare for what the requirements we, we want to make sure that yeah. if we submit an application and we're entitled to this money and for whatever reason we just yeah. don't cross you know the t you dot the i we don't get it it's yeah well we uh as you know we have uh jose vasquez who works with us on writing grants and so he's going to be on this project uh, we've recently been working with a uh, consultant firm in sacramento one of the principals is Kelly Brooks Lindsay, uh, who was with C uh, CSAC and was their human services uh, consultant. And so we will be consulting with her as well as working through our state associations, such as the County Welfare Directors Association, uh, to try to stay on top of this. Um, the, it has been passed. I'm sure there will be details that we have to pay attention to, and we will do that. Um, but it's our intention um, to work with uh, 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 CSDC and Cheeseba, uh, you know, in order to uh, put forward uh, an application that will uh, bring funds into our community. Any other questions or comments? Okay, Jim. Well, thank you for uh, that update. So now it looks like we will. Uh, amazingly break for lunch right before 12 o'clock. We, we are going back in closed session, but I just had to make note that yeah. for once, I think yeah. the first time this year under my chairmanship, we're out before lunch. <laughs> so we will, I know that we will be readjourning back at 1.30. Okay. okay? So have we a great lunch. Take a break. <laughs> yeah. Angie, bring her up here.
items number one, three, and four on today's closed session agenda item. Agenda item number one is to um, confer with legal counsel regarding anticipated litigation and the significant exposure to litigation pursuant to subdivisions D2 and E2 of Government Code Section 54956.9 in one case. <coughs> the facts and circumstances justifying this closed session was the potential of additional litigation regarding the master tax sharing agreement currently being litigated in Award Homes Inc. versus the County of San Benito et al. filed under case number CU-15-00099 and BMC Promiseway LLC doing business as benchmark communities versus the County of San Benito et al. filed in the Superior Court of California in the County of San Benito under case number CU-15-0056. At this time, the board took no reportable action. In regards to agenda item number three, the board met and conferred with legal counsel regarding existing litigation pursuant to subdivisions A and D1 of section 54956.9 in the case of BMC Promiseway LLC doing business as benchmark communities versus the County of San Benito the city of, and the City of Hollister. This case is filed in the Superior Court of California in the County of San Benito under case number CU-15-00056. At this time, the board took no reportable action. Finally, the board met and conferred with legal counsel regarding existing litigation on agenda item number four. Uh, the, the existing litigation was pursuant to subdivisions A and D1 of section 54956.9 in the case of Award Homes Inc. versus the County of San Benito and the City of Hollister et al. This action is filed in the Superior Court of California and the County of San Benito under case number CU-15-00099. At this time, the board took no reportable action. Thank you. Thank you, Council. And so now I, um, I'm going to turn it over to our CAO. I know that we have some <coughs> follow-up action from the hearings that we had um, yesterday. I don't have the agenda in front of me from yesterday, but I believe that we have to do like the final adoption, right? Or um, well, the final adoption happens in August, but this is kind of like the 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 overall um, the temporary due pass, I believe. You're going closing, closing meeting. Yeah. So, so, M Mr. Chair, if, you, if I may, it's we have it uh, the public hearing on both agendas, one for our uh, our budget, a special board meeting yesterday, as well as one on our regular agenda. So, it was um, noted during our regular agenda. So, we'll go ahead and, if if you don't mind, we'll go through the public hearing. That consists of item 40, 41, and 42 okay. in our in our in our special board meeting, and we'll hear that from RMA. And then at that point, then we'll move forward with the with those other items. Okay. We'll we'll I go ahead and adjourn. We'll any adjourn. Final comments. Any we'll, final we'll, comments. Well, we'll adjourn from our regular meeting today, and then we'll reconvene or, or readjourn to our special board meeting after. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So we'll move. Is it uh, RMA or is it Melinda? Yeah, it'll be RMA. RMA office. <laughs> That's what we're on. We're on 30, 39. 39. Okay. Good afternoon, <coughs> members of the board. Uh, my role here this afternoon is to is to very briefly introduce this and then turn this over to my crack staff, Adam Goldstone and Linda McElroy, who have all of the answers for you. Um, Adam will make a brief presentation as well. But my job really is to to tell you that there's not a lot new in this. There's no surprises, certainly, uh, things that we've talked about before. And also to note that the Planning Commission in March, I believe, um, held a public hearing on this and found the, the uh, capital improvement program consistent with the county's general plan as is required by the government code. Any preliminary questions? Any questions from members of the board at this time? <coughs> okay, Mr. Goldstone. Thank you very much. Um, I know you considered the bulk of the budget yesterday, but we saved the best for last, right? <laughs> Get its own day for it. Um, starting off with the with the road and bridge projects, um, you'll see these are all, as uh, as Mr. Barnes said, these are all carryovers that we've been working on for some time. Uh, there are a few that have been removed. Let me point out that the the bold and italicized projects are the ones that are recommended in this budget um, the 
The regular font ones are, are ones that are either coming off or were, or excuse me, were requested and not recommended for funding as we get down to the facility ones, there's a few of those. So you'll see that um, there were four road and bridge projects that were uh, removed or, or canceled due to uh, various issues with, with funding and staffing that uh, I believe you're all aware of. Um, I can go through each one or if there's any specific questions you have on these, I, I don't know if they're, uh, looks like. Uh, Adam, I have, I want to know, I mean, I want to know if all the bridge projects are gonna get done, you know, in the next six months. <laughs> <laughs> Six, all of them? Uh, okay, I see Maybe one head going up and down. Great. Uh, the one John Smith realignment at Fairview intersection. Is that a doable project? And if it's not a doable project, can we get that taken off and just resurface the existing road up to the portion? I think it's a half mile or three quarters of a mile up to what we've already resurfaced John Smith all the way to the. Um, to the landfill this, this is this seems like uh, and I and I know it's being held up by fishing game if it's going to be held up for fishing game forever I just I just want to as one supervisor I want to walk away from it and and improve what we have well as, as you may have learned earlier this morning that any conversation with fish and wildlife is a there can be a wild card in that and so although the Santana Ranch Habitat Conservation Plan is, I, I would say, in process, um, we don't have an, an end date, approval date for that at this point. Um, the, the, the John Smith realignment is awaiting that because it participates in that habitat plan. Okay. So we're at the mercy of fish and wildlife, um, I would say. I would say that it <coughs> will happen, but I can't say when, and not in the six months that you just alluded to, certainly. Well. <laughs> Sorry. So how do, we, how do we take a project off this yeah. list? Do you know if there's a local money? Yeah. There's been too much federal money already oh. developed in the design. Oh. Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Munzer, this is your money. This is local money. It's not state, uh, not state money, not federal money. You may do with it as you wish. Now, there, there is. Having said that, there, the project is there for a reason, because it, you know, the truck traffic and unsafe conditions on John Smith Road and so on. And we would want, uh, I think, to continue to pursue some sort of project there. But if this is removed, uh, we could certainly study something else. Um, Mr. Chair, can I request that this would be agendized on its own, that we can be um, updated on how much <coughs> local money has been spent on <coughs> design? And if, and I, I, it doesn't have to be agendized all that soon, I'll give you time to find out things. Sure. And if maybe you can find out between now and when it is agendized, and ASAP, you know, sometime, uh, of course. ASAP, I'm sorry, um, estimated time of arrival for this baby. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some kind of legitimate time when we can expect this project to be done. And just to because clarify, this is the, the John Smith realignment? John Smith realignment. Okay. Okay. All right. Sure. Okay. Thank yeah, you. so we will, um, if Mr. Barnes can just work with the CAO and we'll, we'll pick a date. Okay. Thanks, Adam. Sorry, some of the road projects, uh, a lot happened while I was gone and I'm not up on all of them. Um, the other one should be, um, they're all still, they're moving. Um, I had hoped to have a little bit more time frame nailed down on a few of them. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to quite get all of the information we needed to put together some sort of a rough schedule for you, but we are still working on that and we'll have an update as soon as we can. Uh, just to, you know, try to try to see when some of these are going to happen. But they are all moving, as you've seen with some of the contracts you've been uh, and amendments that have been approved. So if I may, um, I'll move down to facility projects. <coughs> um, starting off with the 
the jail expansion, the adult detention facility expansion. Um, it's being shown here, uh, per the information last week, the budget adjustment up to $20 million uh, total project cost, uh, give or take. If we do get direction from the board to proceed with this project, we will need that full amount at least um, encumbered to be able to award you know, the bid this year. You would still have time, of course, to uh, formally decide to proceed or not when bids come in. But we have to show the full amount so that we can be ready. Even though it's not payable, as I said last week, uh, the extra five million would not be um, payable for another 18 to 24 months. Um, I, I would like to receive a little bit of direction on this project at least um, in the sheriff's office as well just to just so that we know over the next month or so um, before the next uh, board meeting that we can make uh, some additional moves and, and proceedings on this um, so if it's appropriate if, if um, this new adjusted budget is acceptable uh, for that project to the board um, so that we can move forward, at least for the time being. Okay, do you need um, some direction right now? Um, we can do it at the end after you hear everything. Okay. If that's all right, so you can evaluate everything. Um, but that is something we, we would like to seek today. Um, okay. So moving on down then, the Hall of Records elevator replacement, this is the old courthouse. Um, this is with recorder modernization funds uh, out of Joe Paul's office. That, that elevator, obviously, as you know, has been slated for replacement uh, many times. We, we, we have to do it now, so uh, that will happen this year. Materials recycling facility is, is just a small amount of funding out of our integrated waste department to better handle uh, the recycling events that they conduct. Who, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman? Fred Patel. Uh, now, what's this for? Yeah, it's not a whole lot of money, I know. The recycling facility? Materials uh, recycling facility. That's for some minor improvements to an existing county facility that is yet to be determined where they could hold um, the occasional Saturday events that they conduct for the hazardous What are we waste. doing right now with it? <laughs> it's out at the landfill and it's causing some traffic problems uh, out onto the road and, and other efficiency issues and there may be a better location and they can uh, kick a little money into um, some storage or some uh, signage or whatever else we may need at another facility to, to help hold this event. Out at the landfill is where, where you're thinking about? No, that's where it is now. We, we would probably move it. Uh, that's the plan is to put it at another location uh -huh. and use this money to, to make the minor improvements that would be needed to, to conduct that event. And where, where did the funding come out of for, for this that you? Uh, I'm not sure if it was a, a special um, grant or, or allocation within the integrated waste, but it's something out of, out of their budget. I think it's funds that they collect through holding the events, if I'm, if I'm correct. Landfill, uh, landfill enterprise funds, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Related to the hazardous waste, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, the be Behavioral Health Building, uh, as you know, we're, we're proceeding with the Adam, acquisition. Adam, we have yes. one question. Before you go on yes. from, from that, so is this like the third, is it the third Saturday when, when the landfill has recycling? And that is part of their contract, right, that they are supposed to conduct that? Um, uh, the integrated waste actually handles that with a, with a third party vendor that comes out and sets up uh, a right. little operation okay. off to the side at the entrance there. And they set up every Saturday, and then they tear it down, and, okay. and all that. Okay. So it's okay. So so it's not part of the contract for the landfill. It's no, it's okay. just okay. held right. there. That's yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah. This is more. This is for hazardous, like okay. paint right. and, and whatnot. Thank you. Uh, Behavioral health building. Uh, as you know, we're proceeding with acquisition of land uh, using funding f uh, available to the behavioral health department. We'll be bringing that back to you shortly for action. Um, the homeless shelter, you heard a lot about that this morning, and that's proceeding. We'll, we'll be bringing an architect contract to you soon uh, to finalize the construction documents on that. Fire station number three is another one. Uh, the budget got adjusted a bit um, to reflect 
the latest cost estimate of approximately a million dollars. Um, this is based on the preliminary designs and coordination with the fire department out there and what the existing site needs as far as improvements uh, to be a functional center there. And that, that project is in design now. Sheriff's offer, office locker room um, showers. This is a um, long needed project that's in conjunction with the PSAP relocation item below that. PSAP is the backup dispatch center that's currently housed next door. We need to move that to a more secure uh, facility and uh, a room at the sheriff's office was identified for that and it's currently is the locker room so we need to make move some things around uh, to, to fit that in there as well as make the improvements that, that the sheriff's office needs uh, for that function. Juvenile hall facility improvements. This consists of some exterior uh, recreational improvements. They have some very broken up asphalt and some grass areas that uh, can be improved uh, to be a better surface for the, for the youth to play on. Hospital property remediation and clearance. This is the old Southside Hospital. Putting some money aside to uh, deal with that project, uh, clean it up on our own, uh, depending on how the results of a, of a forthcoming RFP it just gives you some options uh, to be able to finally take care of that uh, facility. I have a question, Mr. Chen. Thank you. Bias. Um, Adam, how soon are we expecting this to move forward? Uh, I'm working on the RFP language now. Uh, I hope to get it advertised in July and uh, we should get responses in August and we would bring those those ideas back to the board for your selection at that time, probably in August, September. And I'm assuming that these costs can be recouped once we decide what we're going to do with the property? That uh, will, yeah, that will depend on the uh, development proposal that you select. Again, okay. this just gives us some flexibility uh, depending on what you want to see happen there and if we need to bring some money to the table or not mm -hmm. um, to make it happen. Okay. So we'll have to see. It'll all depend on what, on what sort of proposals we receive. Okay. I would love to see this project uh, move forward as quickly as possible. It's disgusting what we, the people around there have to live with and it's a liability and we really need to move this as quickly as we can. Absolutely. So I would like to encourage the board to support that because it's uh, it's blight. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I, I concur with that 100 percent. And in the RFP, put a <coughs> deadline to, uh, after Thanksgiving or uh, or before Christmas. This project should be done. It should be an empty lot before Christmas. Okay. So. Or I put that in the RFP, the ability <laughs> to get that done. Absolutely. I'll, I'll add that language in there. Uh, resource Recovery Park, um, did you know about that? Uh, just still holding the money there uh, for something to move forward on that item. One, one of the projects that was requested and not recommended was IT relocation. Um, we still need to try to get them off the hill at some point. Uh, we don't really have a suitable location yet, so we'll, we'll keep looking though, whether there's funding or not. Equipment and furniture. Uh, this is related to some fleet replacement items uh, that are broken out there for the uh, road department. The River Parkway Regional Park, uh, ongoing efforts to develop that. The EIR comments, uh, public comments closed this Friday. So we'll be able to convert that draft um, into <coughs> the final EIR uh, after that. Mr. Chair, we could go back to the equipment and furniture, if I may. Sure. Um, it shows the recommended, but it doesn't show um, <coughs> where it's coming from. Where it, it's not on a either general fund, trust, and other funds. Where do we anticipate that money to come from? Sorry, uh, we missed that there. That's uh, equipment impact fees. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not not general fund. It's not general fund, right? So it would go under the trust or other, other Correct. funds. Correct. Okay. Correct. Sorry about that. Um, Mr. Chair, <coughs> on the Sorry. regional park, uh, Adam, what's, when the board made the decision to go forward with the regional park, was there a dollar tied to it, total allocation dollar? 
Um, the only amount allocated was the bulk or remainder of the park impact fee fund. It was $3 million, right? That's uh, it, yeah, it's been going down every year as we you know, divert some to the other parks, as you see here, and then also acquire the land and consultant fees so and that. So we've been... The purchase of the land that we have so far as of today, those dollars have come from this account. Yes. Right? So we only purchased $800,000 worth of uh, uh, land. Uh, I don't remember the exact figure of the parcel we bought uh, several years ago, but there was one parcel that we purchased. Okay. Right, purchased more. No, we purchased more. I mean, maybe last year was only one, but I believe that we have acquired other properties. Something may have happened uh, in my time away. Yes. Uh, but when I, I was here, we purchased one. Um, and we do have a meeting coming up to, you know, with the high school to continue that discussion as well. Okay. To All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To acquire more. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Um, Vets Park Improvements, that, forgive me, I'm, these aren't uh, all of mine. I can't recall what, uh, oh, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, that was for uh, barbecue pits and uh, restroom improvements out there. The, those things need um, some upgrades and, and replacement. Uh, the Vets Park Irrigation Phase 2, that's continuing the uh, well project and getting the, the irrigation lines all tied in. Vets Park Parking Lot Lighting, uh, a couple of test lights were put up and this is to continue uh, installing those throughout the parking lot. Bertha Briggs Building Replacement, um, this could also be an upgrade uh, or improvements to the Bertha Briggs Building for security, ADA, and other maintenance items. Can we call it someplace else? I mean, something else. It sounds like we're going to replace the whole <laughs> building. Um, we probably <laughs> just want to call it Bertha Briggs Building Improvements because we're not replacing any of the building, right? That structure is going to stay up. If we could afford to, we would. I know, I would for too. Two, <laughs> for two fifty, it may end up being more of an improvement. But so it's an improvement. I think I think the intent was to replace it, but as the funding kind of got allocated elsewhere, um, you know, it's probably turned into more of an improvement now okay. yeah the intent is to upgrade as much as possible um, there's a few projects here that again were requested um, but not recommended um, those hopefully can come back at a, at a, at a later time uh, next year perhaps um, I won't go over each of those um, with the exception of the five-year CIP I would like to bring that up again it, it, we really um, and, and I don't know if 50,000 is, is really what's needed to do that, it, it's likely something less. Uh, this is efforts to actually create a formal capital improvement plan, a five year, you know, similar to what many other counties do, that really looks years out and tries to phase projects um, based on funding and need and helps identify funding and becomes a really good tool for planning for for your board and for admin and um, everyone else to, to kind of see where we want to go. Okay, I have questions on those, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Tobias. All right, on the IT infrastructure, we have committed to, to do a lot more with IT. Um, at our retreat, we spoke about it. Can you tell me what specifically this infrastructure request was for and why we're not recommending it, especially since it's on our priority list? Sure, I think that actually might be something for our CAO with his IT background there. Well, um, I'll be honest with you, $30,000 is not going <laughs> to cover um, all the things that we need. Um, so I, I don't really know the exact details with that, <laughs> but I can tell you that there's a tremendous amount of work that we do need to put into um, switches. We need new switches. We just had an outage. Um, this last week weekend so the, the IT folks were actually working this weekend on, on an outage item um, and that was a failure of hardware so some of our equipment and if you for some of the board members here probably remember when you actually implemented the IT department and there was an infusion of switches which is about um, almost three hundred thousand dollars for switches and that's what connects all the offices together well that you know those switches have been running 24 hours a day for 10 years so there you know They're those need out. to be changed out and that was three hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment there so um there's a need to replace it there has been some replacements of key 
area. So our, our central NOC has a new switch in there, um, and as well as the other network operating center. But um, other than that, the outlining areas need to have replacements done, which is costly. So um, I apologize. I can't give you the exact answer what the $30,000 is outlined for, but I can tell you that's... It's not going to be. It's not going to be enough. Just for one switch. <laughs> <laughs> probably, yeah, probably right, Supervisor. Bill well, I guess my thought is that if we don't um, go ahead and, and approve some sort of monies towards it, if we do have some need, mm -hmm. we we haven't we haven't approved it. I mean, then what? Do we treat it as an emergency and then go back and deal with it? <coughs> uh, I just think it's too important a a, a, a department f with you know every department in the county relying on it yeah. that um, we need to do yeah. something. And that's kind of why we're here today to, to discuss these items. I think, you know, we had allocated um, so much money for, for capital projects this year. Um, if your board wishes, we could allocate more funding to technology. And, and I, again, like I mentioned yesterday, I believe we're going to have an IT, um, the ad hoc committee is going to meet in um, July to look at what our future needs are for the year. So um, this is probably a prime time to go ahead and allocate some funding for that and whether we use it or not. Exactly. We don't use it, we don't use it, but we'll come back to your board with a, a plan. That's a, that, that was our plan is to come back to the entire board with a plan for technology for this next year and the years to come, to be quite honest. So, uh, you know, I would, I would say at least $250,000, $300,000 to technology. Um, and then we use it, we use it, we don't, we don't. Yeah, I, I think it's an important part of our operation, and um, I think we need to consider that. And then, so we can discuss that. But the other thing is the security systems. I believe that we're very antiquated there. Anybody can walk into any building, any time, without whether they belong there or not. I think that's a safety issue for our employees. And I don't think it takes a lot of money to do some sort of a keyless entry with identification, you know, badges or cards or whatever. I just think that that's important. We, we're too lax on that kind of security. So yeah, maybe we won't have a five-year plan, but we could have an immediate plan. <coughs> sure, and, and, and I think a, a lot of these that, that are uh, requested and not recommended didn't have special funding associated with them, so it was hard to find the money or or there wasn't enough you know um, uh, handle on on what we really need that's one of the ones where we we really need to kind of see every building's a different animal so to speak you know different needs and, and different design that requires different solutions right. um, so it really is a building by building assessment yeah. one thing that the the CAO and, <laughs> and myself have, have talked about in the past is you know getting to a countywide system of, of badge readers um, similar to what other counties have um, and depending on your permissions you know your ID badge can open you know just about any door you need to um, that's something that requires electrified you know locks and hinges and things like that as well as data connections back to you know all the servers so that it can identify you and everything that is definitely where we want to get to um, but the best way to start implementing that whether it's building by building how much of it we can do in pieces, we still kind of need to get our hands around that. Um, but that, that's where we want to go. And, and if, if I may, Mr. Chair, I believe it's like $1,000 a door, I think is what it would cost to, it's to do that. And that's, and that's just probably to do more of the hardware, we, we're probably not including all the technology and everything else on monitoring as well. So it could be. It's, it's a fairly large project, but it, it's doable. When, when I was at Santa Clara County, the, the, whole, the whole county is wired that way, every single door, I mean, in the county. With, with my ID badge all over the county, I could get in, you know, to doors at other facilities or whatever based on the, you know, permissions that I had. Right. Um, nobody needs a key, really, anymore. So right. it, it would be great for efficiencies and granting access and special cases and when people are hired or you know, they quit or whatever, it's very easy to, you know, change those permissions and not have to, you know, uh, go through a whole lot of hassle. So it, it's definitely the future. We just really need to see what, what it's going to take to get there. Well, I'd like to start seeing that sooner than later, but if we don't put it in there at all, it's definitely going to be later. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I see that we we're kind of allocating roughly 750,000 from general funds to to the capital project. Um, the hospital road, or uh, I'm sorry, the the county hospital property. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants that torn down more than I do. And I see we're allocating general funds to do that at this stage. My understanding was we were gonna try to get a grant either either through um, Health and Human Services Agency or through a third party taking it on for us. We, we, we certainly still are. This is more of just an insurance if you, if nothing seems to pan out and the board really wants to get rid of it, we're able to do something. This is certainly not going to be our first choice. Oh, okay. I, 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 guess, I, I guess I misunderstood you. It sounded like you were going out for RFPs already for no, it. We, we, we are RFPs for proposals to develop, develop the for development. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry okay. And then they would, they would, they okay. would mitigate that, that issue out there. Okay. And then put in uh, properties, affordable housing. Okay. That's so right if now we can what go we're looking down at. the Grant Road, then that may free up a little bit of money for IT and for security. Right, and I and I received, if I may, Mr. Chair, I received an email. Um, it looks like the Brownsfield um, listings, there is a um, uh, proposed grant um, for fiscal year 17, and, and they're accepting the applications, and the due date on that is August 10th, 2016. So I forwarded that to RMA, as well as Jim, and so Jose, who is a grant writer for Health and Human Services is aware of that, and uh, he's right now looking into actually applying for that uh, to to mitigate that um, okay. sore spot out there. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. So it's more of a safety net. If none of our other options pan out, we have options. Also, it's budgeted there. If we do decide if we don't need it, we can move it uh, to one of the other items. Mr. Chair, <coughs> uh, on that notion of the general fund, the other three uh, items. Are those dire needs? Are there necessities? We got to do it. And I, I'm only speaking from a general fund perspective. Sure. Um, I don't know if dire is the word. They are very needed. Um, it is my understanding that the PSAP and the Sheriff's Office locker room likely will receive um, some sort of funds from OES uh, to complete those. We didn't have all the details yet on that. But that is something that um, they either have or they're working on uh, getting to, to accomplish those. So um, uh, I think the lack of clarity on that is why it's shown as a general fund right now, but there, there's a high probability that, that uh, we're gonna get OES funds for most, if not all of that, those items. All right, thank you. Uh, additionally, with Juvenile Hall, I believe they have some special funding as well. But again, it didn't have the details yet, but it's coming. Um, in that same vein with the COG yard improvements and the public health and environmental health relocation, those are also special funds that those departments are acquiring either through grants or other special funds that they have specifically for those uh, features. And that's... Uh, that's essentially all we have there. Uh, grand total of around 90 million, including the bridges there. Uh, at this time, do we have any questions for Adam? Okay, and then I think we have to get back to the adult, uh, the detention, uh, the facility expansion, right? Yes, please. And so what is, I, I know that you um, had, had provided us with an update during our workshop uh, last Wednesday. Um, so maybe if you can uh, provide a brief um, a summary f for the board of the cost increases and, and what sure, yeah. sure, absolutely. Um, so as as uh, explained, the construction climate in in the state and specifically with detention projects, you know, has resulted in in wild price swings, um, which is where the estimate puts our cost at about five million dollars more. Um, that does include. Uh, further escalation costs and contingencies since we're not at that point of bidding yet there still could be some some adjustments going on um, we have looked at 
other options for how to reduce that cost. Nothing is panning out um, due to the strings attached, you know, with the state funding, um, scope reduction, uh, additional funding, those kinds of things are not uh, proving very possible. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the sheriff uh, did talk to some of his counterparts. Uh, they echoed a lot of those same, same issues, same concerns, um, same frustrations uh, that we're facing right now, and they're all approaching them differently. And I think what you had mentioned on Wednesday is this isn't, you know, uh, a San Benito problem, but it's a statewide problem. That's um, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll start here on my right. Uh, Mr. Bertello, what do you think? Do you? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. We have to go, go forward. to go forward, and that's a good number to start with. And uh, as things uh, clarify uh, go as we plan it, may have to go up a little bit if we want to include renovations to the existing facility too down the road and certainly we would incorporate that in any funding options we bring you and that would happen in a later fiscal year uh, as far as when that would be due so I'm, okay. I'm good so you want to maintain uh, your commitment to the yes. project okay absolutely supervisor Munzer okay and um, so the 20 million does not include the upgrades to the existing facility uh, no it does not this is just for the expansion based okay. on the estimates we have and then you put it all into the other funds but there's going to be a substantial amount that's going to come out that's going to hit the general fund at some point depending on yeah how we how we make up that shortfall it, it that's one option yes <laughs> so there's a slight chance that we could find some other funding i mean there's always a chance, always a chance. <laughs> okay. but likely likely not Okay. Um, yeah, with the growing community, I know we gotta we gotta go down this road. I'm just I'm concerned of what this is gonna do to the general fund. And I mentioned the other night it's gonna be just like the facility across the street. After it gets built, there's gonna be issues oh, I with you know costing more on a year to year <coughs> basis to to man the larger facility. So I am concerned about that, but we. I need to go down, continue going continue. down this road. Okay. Fine. Supervisor De La Cruz. Yeah, I mean, I, I do have concerns. We're talking about five million dollars, um, and it's probably going to go higher uh, unless uh, Supervisor Barrios, who uh, who has been sent to the construction. Thank you for that uh, timing issue of why, why is it so expensive at seven hundred plus square foot versus how, what was it originally two hundred or something like that. Five hundred. Yeah, it's just. Sometimes delay might actually be our friend in this case. Um, could be. <laughs> could be. Mm -hmm. um, just a side note, uh, we had a hard time with the court in terms of, you know, recognizing those members of our community, especially elected officials, the city council, San Benito County. Nowhere in that facility does it have an acknowledgement from the county and the city. Uh, you know, maybe in this <coughs> case we, we have the sheriff out in the audience, you know, make sure there is some type of acknowledgement from the county and who who, who else help us fund you know the the, the money that we're going to get in is is a cop still an option yeah we were able to confirm that with the okay. conditions of the state funding that that is an option okay because i that will for me will make it a lot i can s swallow that five million dollars if it's a, over time and then i'll be okay when when we come back oh, i'm sorry go ahead no that's fine. Oh, uh, when we do come back for more action on this item uh with regards to the bids, we will have more information. We'll continue working on that to give you the full slate of options. Okay. And Supervisor Barrios. Yeah, we need to move forward on that. Uh, and I'm assuming that there's nothing on the general fund column because we really will not be spending any money in 2016-17. That's, that's a given because we won't be doing anything until 20, 2018. Is that correct? We, we I'm just trying to think. I. We could have one or two contractor payments this fiscal year if uh -huh. everything goes well, but again, it wouldn't be that full it amount. Wouldn't it wouldn't be the right. full five million for sure. Now, this uh, fiscal, this uh, fixed asset list that you have here, it has fiscal year 16 to 2018, but we really mean 2017. We're only addressing one year. Is that correct? Um, oh at the top there uh yes i'm sorry about that yes that's correct 
this is just for this fiscal year. Okay, so I say we move forward and identify, just we're really making a commitment to continue with the, the process of That's getting all. that, um, receiving the monies from the state and building the, the expansion, so. Right, okay. yeah, and I'm in, uh, um, in full agreement as well. I think okay, we need perfect. to maintain our commitment and we'll certainly cross the, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, I, I appreciate the support and we will uh, continue working on it and come back with any options we can. As part of this commitment that the board is making, I think you should know that you are also authorizing me as the auditor to provide financial information to the state that says there is a financial commitment on behalf of the board to go forward with this project. Later, when, when there is a financing tool, you know, there are you know, the board can, you know, choose to do COPs if, yeah. if, they, if they so choose. But so you know, that means that I will have to provide the state with proof of, hey, we have the financial wherewithal to be able to go forward with this project right now. So that's kind of the commitment that the board is making is that <clears throat> I will have to show that the unencumbered funds that the county has available is the, you know, is the is the financial proof that we are capable of doing that. And I just want the board, I wanted to enter that into the record, in case you know, yeah. you know, it, it just, it, it's just it's just important for me to have. Uh, Mr. Chair, right, Vera Cruz. Uh, Joe, on on that note, does that mean that as of to say tomorrow we approve this budget, July first, five million dollars will be a set aside that we cannot touch. No, I don't think so. I, I think what it means is only that, hey, the county is not, uh, the county is not at a such a financial stage that we don't have additional monies available okay. in in the county. Uh, this doesn't affect the budget. Doesn't affect any of those things, except it it only shows the financial commitment mm -hmm. that you know the county hey wants to proceed forward. Um, even though th none of that money is going to be touched, right? Uh, at least the plan is that none of, none of it will be touched for the next year or two. S but it, it basically the board's authorizing me to make representations on behalf of the county that you know the board is committed to this project and as a good faith effort to show that commitment. These are the unencumbered funds that the county has that uh, shows that commitment. Mr. Chair, if I may. Sure. Right. Well, my understanding as well is that we're committing to this, but if we go out to RFP, we look at the bids, and then we find out that it's $10 million more, your board has the ability to really scrutinize and, and analyze it and say, you know what, that's a little bit more than the five million. So that's still within our and discretion. that's still within your discretion at that point to move the project forward or not move the project forward. Right. Okay. Because the cost can either, you know, stay the same, go up, or go down. Exactly. As Adam had presented <coughs> last week. Yeah, and that and that's a very good point uh, from both gentlemen. Um, we will need to certify as a, as part of the process of going to bid. We will need to certify to the state that we do have, you know, money in the bank, so to speak, um, that's available to us. And, and Joe Paul would be helping with, with that. And as the CAO mentioned, um, when we go to bid, and then of course when the bids are received, you'll have full full options available to you then to proceed or not, uh, depending on what the actual costs are. So, are there at this time? Are there any other questions or comments for Adam? Is that the end of the presentation? That's it, unless there were any other. Um, Mr. Chair, if I may, I want to. I don't think we had closure with a couple of those items. If we look down that list, if you don't mind scrolling down to the IT infrastructure, um, security systems, um, even the ADA, we talked a little bit in the five year CIP and telecom. To me, what, what you're saying here, Adam, is you've taken these off the list, correct? Because they're not in bold. The, these were requested and not recommended to be be funded since they didn't have a funding. Source okay, but them. but if we do find funding, as an example, from the five hundred thousand from the, um, the um, the hospital, the hospital, 
we can redirect that money. Okay, I just want to make sure that that's that the board is aware of that as well. That we could go ahead and move forward with those other options with IT or with the funding that we have from the old hospital, if that if that pans out, or we can put money additional money if the board wishes into one of those projects or into this so that we can go ahead and move forward with those uh, if, if the board wishes. Mm -hmm. and, and that, oh. Supervisor, uh, sorry. Yeah, that was going to be my recommendation. Thank you. I wasn't going to drop it because I think it's really important. I was going to recommend that we put the 250000 from the general fund into the IT infrastructure and maybe not all the 50000 for the security system, but we can start with one building at a time and maybe take um, take a fifth of that and put that in there. The idea is to not wait until next year to start looking at something uh, to secure. So that was what I was going to recommend. Now, do we have the funding for it? We may or may not. But if we find that we can save on the 500000 for the hospital demolition, then we can redirect those funds to to this, but it's on the list. Uh, Munzer. Just, just clarification. So you're saying <coughs> leave, uh, for example, IT <laughs> infrastructure. Is that? Let me make sure I'm looking at it right. Not, not make it bold, but just leave it where it's not necessary this year. But go ahead and raise it to two hundred fifty thousand or one hundred fifty thousand. No, I would I recommend that we go ahead and and, and earmark it as a sixteen seventeen um, commitment to move forward because that's key to our technology okay, so department. And it's going to be from general fund. It's going to be from general fund. So we're going to have to reduce some mm. contingency or or fund balance well or we could is it Reserve possible it. to say that we will put it in there and then that we will commit to using those funds if we get a savings from the hospital what I don't want to do is to put it off for another year that's what I don't see is <coughs> is sure. a good you know path to take and I may be wrong uh, but please I, I know that IT was a big Commitment. So, if I'm yeah, going I, the I wrong, mean, I, I do recall getting the. You know, I, I think we could all recall getting that uh, that thorough report, um, a presentation from our IT staff, yeah. uh, not even a couple months ago, yeah. uh, where they detailed our, our needs, our infrastructure needs. Right. Um, and so, I guess what we need is, 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 you know, I have no problem moving money around um, <coughs> or making a commitment. You know, if 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 we do get some of that 500, you know. Um, yeah thousand dollars back making that commitment that it's going to go to IT I'm not sure how we do that yeah. but uh, if, I, if I may I just I just um, talked to our auditor I think the best thing is we can just add an additional five hundred thousand out of reserves we use it we use it if we don't we don't I think it I mean that would be our recommendation um, instead of taking it from another area another budget unit or or whatever else I think a lot of that has already been spoken for and budgeted for um, um, that would be that's up to the board. It's your 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 call, your decision. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, um, thank you. Um, I was thinking of maybe doing one of those creative financing where you put it to the CIP without any funding attached to it, and so if money becomes available out of the hospital, we can just put that money in there. So then it doesn't affect you know general fund allocation, a and also um, there is going to be a committee, right, an IT committee meeting pretty soon. <coughs> Why don't we just don't fund it, put it on the CP, and then when the committee reports back to the Board of Supervisors, they can come in with a, a long-term planning claim what the fiscal impacts is going to be and what, what are we looking at our, our immediate needs and med medium and long-term plans. So my only concern or my only thought with that would be is if the Brownfields grant doesn't come through, does the board want to move forward with demolishing that building? Yeah, I think that's, that's your, you have to decide that. <laughs> yeah. That's key. Yeah. yeah, so that's 500000 right there. Okay. So that money will not be there. But if okay. the board, hmm. you know, wants to continue to move forward with that journey to excellence and, and continue to move forward with technology, then there's not going to be any more funding to do that this year. We're going to have to wait a whole other year. So I think what we were just discussing, it, would, it might behoove us to go ahead and allocate it right now those reserves 
and, if, and at least allow us the ability to move forward with something if we need to this year. And, th and that's my that's point. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Chair? So, uh, Ray, are you saying we can move another 500000 from the reserves and still be above the floor that we set in our policy? Yeah, we have Melinda here. She's our numbers person. And I wasn't recommending 500000 My recommendation well, well, was 300 maximum, uh, 250 for IT, and I, I, the 50 that was um, requested for the security. Okay, if we look at these schedules, um, I think that we can do this. Um, so on this schedule, this shows you how we're <coughs> going to allocate the, um, remember we had that big pot of unreserved uh, fund balance, and this is how we were gonna allocate it. The floor um, for the amount that we needed to keep um, for general reserves um, was 25% of um, uh, expenditures. And then we had set aside $3 million for PARs. Um, we were going to start funding depreciation and then we were gonna put in a disaster recovery amount of a million dollars. Um, this is a, um, and then we were, let's see, we were going to use So then we had this six million five hundred thousand. I mean, yeah, um, of unassigned, and we were going to use roughly five point five million dollars of that. So we could. There is some money in there if you want to um, take out another five hundred thousand. We're also going to. I'm not sure if it shows on this page or not. Uh, right above that, right the uh, the arrow, right there, that guy. There you go, and you can. Um, there's also going to be two million dollars from the teeter reserve that we're going to be putting into um, our fund balances. We were going to use a half a million dollars of that for the um, hospital demolition if we needed to. So there's still a million five of that left if you want to do that. So there is some money in there if you want. And to. that's a teeter fund. And this is only one time money, so we need to yeah. make sure that it's not used for anything yeah. but one time expenses, right. which right. could be IT and security system. Yeah. So Melinda, I think the question is is we had we had created policy that um, I think uh, Mr. Uh, Supervisor Munzer is requesting. I believe our cap was ten million dollars. Right. So that I think that's cap. what we want to make sure that we are you know, obliging by that policy. Right. Okay. Because that's our that's our policy. That's right. Uh huh. Which you just said, yeah. Okay. O okay. So, so our our floor, the lowest we wanted to be in our in our reserves, was was ten million. Ten million. Mm -hmm. And am I seeing this one right here? Ten million seven hundred fifty. Mm -hmm. That's the floor. So we don't want to touch any of that. So the, the ten mi again. Is the floor ten million or is the floor ten million seven hundred fifty? Ten million seven hundred and fifty. Okay, that is the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we went down below that, we essentially would have to change our own policy right. that we just created. Okay, right. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and hey, I guess um, I have another question, Mr. Chair. Yeah, if, if in the event so that I IT fails and that we need equipment, something happens, mm -hmm. is that considered a disaster? No. I don't know that. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to. <laughs> I'd have to consult what's legal on that one. But <laughs> I, I, you know, you would have 500 employees. Well, very close to 500 employees not working. So that could be. Yeah, you probably could label it as a disaster, but it would probably be a, 
Hey Ray, um, so for, 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 for clarification, the IT committee is meeting in July yes. to specifically address the needs within IT department? Yes. Uh, Supervisor Botello. Yes. It's okay if Jerry wants to address it. Well, okay. Go ahead. It, it, I mean, so I, I get, <laughs> I, I understand that the IT committee is, is meeting at the end of next month. But if we don't assign some money now, then we're going to have, it's going to be more difficult to come up with that money to do anything once the, uh, once the committee meets, correct? Right. And while well, we also have another uh, thing to consider is that we're going to come back August 9th to have your board formally adopt the budget. So I think we have a little bit of wiggle room there. Um, we're going to meet in July. I, I just think it's prudent that we go ahead and we, if, if this is the direction the board wants and they want to follow or adhere to moving forward with technology, I think we should just adhere that or, or here and put um, some money in it, whether it's 350000 or three hundred or, or half a million into it. Um, I think once the year occurs and we have a plan, we can, we can then address it to the entire board and then the board will then authorize either, you know, moving forward with those projects or not because we may not move forward with them. I right, mean, it just, exactly. It just depends. What Supervisor Botello was but kind of throwing out was we assigned a million dollars into the disaster fund. That was strictly at our discretion. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could reduce that mm -hmm. and then take longer time, longer to build that fund up for a disaster, uh, you know. I think that's a good idea, Mr. Chair. That would be a good fund to, to take it from because it's important enough uh, to move forward. Mm -hmm. And so just tell. yeah, uh, just to add, when when the systems did go down on fr Friday, yeah, it was a disaster <laughs> for the whole county. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. Yeah, that's my point. And um, yeah. I, I, I r as much as I'd like to leave the million. I think uh, we've been fine without that there the, for a very long time. We have our other uh, fifth, uh, 10 million that we could draw from. If we do have a disaster, let's go ahead and, and, and pull some of that what's needed to do IT and, yeah. and go. Mr. Barnes. Mr. Chairman, if I might, back to the hospital for a moment without unduly complicating this. I think it's less likely that you'll need the 500,000 to augment the hospital deal. The way I see that being structured is the hospital property, the land itself, is worth money. And if we put that, we, the county, put that in as a part of the deal, then the developer, whoever that is, can go and use that as collateral for loan and leverage that and pull back out of that construction loan the demolition cost for the hospital. So we won't ever have to put any cash into that deal. So. What I'm saying is that that I think is flexible money that that you can use here if, if you like. Thank you. Just just take it out of disaster. Well, um, <laughs> I really would like to see that hospital gone because we've been wrestling with that for too long. Too too long and yeah. Okay. Um, should we take a little break? A sure. Five-minute break, so staff can yeah. can uh, review what was just talked about. Yeah. All right, let's take All a right. break.
here. And so after a, dis a, a brief discussion with staff, they're recommending that uh, our board um, remove 500,000 from the, the disaster um, relief account, I believe. Um, and so uh, with that, you guys, uh, we can make uh, that decision as a full board. But prior to that, I do want to open it up for public comment on this item. Anyone wishing to provide comment, questions? Okay, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for a decision. Projects for the following projects that IT security system uh, in the five year CIT plan. Okay, so there are, um, there's the there's the IT infrastructure, yep. and then there's the security systems and infrastructure. That 500,000, yep. how um, do you propose that uh, we divide that up? Uh, Is there a recommended amount from staff? There's three of them. Four fifty and fifty. Okay. Okay. I think uh, could get us some good movement on those. Okay. Well, excuse me. Four fifty for the infrastructure. 50 right. Four, for so four fifty for infrastructure and then fifty for security systems and infrastructure. I second. Okay. Is the maker of the motion okay with that? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. And there is a second. Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries five zero. So now we have to adjourn this meeting, correct? Yeah. Yes. Um, and so. It has been requested because um, we're going to readjourn this meeting. Then gonna, we're going to reconvene and continue the meeting from the special meeting from yesterday to finish mm -hmm. our budget stuff. Um, but uh, as was requested, um, uh, in honor because we our next regular scheduled meeting is until July 26th. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Oh uh, uh, well, what I was going to say, you uh, there was a temporary due pass on the item in particular, but there's still the matter of the CIP itself. The, the remainder of the project. remains pending. The remaining funds. Okay. So I'll I think we need to take action on that as well. Okay. I'll make a motion for temporary due pass on the uh, entire CIP as presented by staff with second. the exceptions of okay. previous okay. motion. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. And thank you for that, Adam. Um, and so again, um, since we will be, our next regular schedule meeting is until July 26th of 2016, uh, in honor of um, Independence Day, which is July 4th, 2016. Um, I, I, I don't know if the math is correct, but we wanted, uh, we want to definitely adjourn uh, in honor of our country's 240th birthday. Wow. wow. Uh, the United States of America, right? That is a, a, a great accomplishment. We are the greatest country in the world, yes, the are. greatest form of government, local, state, <laughs> and federal, um, that the world has ever known and ever seen, right? The longest uh, form of government uh, ever. So, you know, our Constitution is an incredible document, and we hope that it will last well beyond all of our lifetimes. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I can get a motion to adjourn. So move, uh, this Mr. Meeting. Chair, to move to our special meeting. Okay, the motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. So now we are going to... Um, we are going to um, reconvene and um, uh, and continue our special meeting from yesterday, which was our special meeting um, and our budget hearings. That's right. And so I'll turn it over to our CAO. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, we're um, we're going to go ahead and reconvene, and we're going to discuss a few items. As we mentioned yesterday, we were going to go ahead and, and move forward with uh, a few corrections that were made. So I have asked uh, Melinda Casillas. Uh, to come up to the podium and to discuss those changes. I know that there was a concern, I believe, out of our probation office. Mm -hmm. So we wanted some clarity for your board and a few other items. Then after that, we're going to go to final uh, budget deliberations. And then we will be uh, requesting your, uh, your board to approve 2016-17 uh, recommended budget. And then we'll um, be reconvening August the 9th for... Um, your, your board to approve the GAN limit uh, through resolution as well as formal adoption at that point. So uh, we have Melinda Casillas here to. to uh, Mr. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Spinoza, the CSAs still need to be addressed. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I 
wanted to point that out and bring it to the attention of the, uh, to the attention of the board before you proceed on the rest of these items because those items still remain pending correct all right so we can go ahead and move forward with that <laughs> I believe we need to do the item number 42 was the CSAs and was there a public hearing wasn't that part of the public hearing that was all part of the public that was, all part of the public that was uh, I believe Brent did you you covered that part of it didn't you I'm sorry what was the question CSAs yeah what about CSAs I'm sorry <laughs> did we adopt, did we adopt anything on, on that I thought we did them. I don't think so I don't the, remember. the question the okay. <coughs> I don't recall making a presentation on it. It's sort of a fog. There were no changes to the CSA budgets. Um, they were carried over as, uh, as from last year. With exception of addition of some street light work. What numbers? Come on up. Good afternoon, members of the board. So the item before you today are all of the individual county service area budgets. Um, what we have in front of you is a schedule of all their funding sources by um, CSA area. Um, we have a total of 55, 34 of them are active and we levy um, fees annually. Um, what you see here under decrease to ob obligated fund balances or actual um, levies that come in um, part of their property tax. Um, every CSA is different in their own way. Some handle street sweeping. Um, we have street lights. Uh, we have road maintenance. Um, there, there are a couple individual CSAs such as Dunville and Stonegate which have um, water issues um, that we handle through a water contract for water treatment and distribution by allocation. If there are any questions regarding any specific CSAs and the services that are provided, I'm here to help answer those questions. Are there any questions from members of the board um, of staff? No. None? Okay. At this time, open up for uh, some comments <coughs> from the public. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for a decision. Temporary due pass, Mr. Chair. Okay, is a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. So now moving on, that was item 42, I believe, right? Yes. So now we will move to uh, would it be the final uh, de deliberations on the budget? Actually, it's going to. Actually, it's, now it's going to be um, the corrections from yesterday, discussion about probation, and. Um, uh, looking at looking quickly looking over the schedules as well so um, okay. there was a few minor corrections that uh, Melinda's going to discuss with your board Melinda. Alrighty, let's do it okay um, I believe there's a packet that has these adjustments in them um, basically um, there was a correction to the probation department um, these have highlights <coughs> these should be highlighted on here um, there was a correction to the probation department with uh, their medical insurance of roughly uh, approximately two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars we also after we went back after um, hearings yesterday we did a quick audit um, and there was a correction <coughs> to uh, public works the maintenance department we had budgeted a vehicle in there however that didn't show up in the actual uh, maintenance budget and also there was an adjustment to uh, planning uh, the engineering department for a fixed asset item uh, we had ten thousand dollars in there but it should have actually been twenty seven thousand five hundred those um, were actually being um, they were calculating um, <coughs> 
populating into the general um, expenses department. Overall, there was no change to the entire budget. They just were, <clears throat> excuse me, um, being picked up in a different department. Um, we had been working with Workiva and the ERP system and trying, as, as you know, trying to match those two. And um, in order to put the agenda together, we had asked them to reorganize the Workiva document. And in that process, it appears that some of the links um, didn't quite work properly and so they were showing some of the items were showing up in the wrong department so anyways I think we fixed all of those again there's no change to the bottom line I just wanted you to know that um, having done a quick audit that we came across a couple of things so those are some adjustments so um, these are the actual um, budget units for each of those changes so again, overall, there is not any change at all to the overall general fund expenditures. Um, they just happen to accidentally show up in different departments. So we'll Mr. Chair, fix if that I for sure um, by the August 9th adoption. If I may, just for clarity for, for illustrative purposes, this is what we, what we requested Wakiva to build the agenda or build uh, the Wakiva system for our, our budget. So this is what we turn in. This is basically what we turn in for the state for formal adoption. Um, and as we're going through the process um, about a few weeks before, two or three weeks before um, the actual hearings, you know, we actually have items on consent mm -hmm. and regular. So what we request them to do is build another one, a template just for the actual special board meeting for budget hearings. And uh, with that, they felt that it was best to go ahead and link Every, link everything into the new unit into another template so with that they were linking everything and that's where the issue is but all of the data goes in directly from the ERP into this and this is where it's at and when they were linking it there was there was a few minor issues so we're going to resolve that issue the following year we're working on it we're slowly but surely tackling it and I think what we're probably going to do and what I'm going to request of them is to have it come directly to have two templates um, separate from each other, not not on top of each other. So yeah, anyways. that makes sense. Are there any comments from members of the board on this uh, on these items? Okay. <laughs> okay. I'd like to open up for um, members of our public okay. for comment. Right. Yeah, that's all we care. Mm -hmm. See none. <coughs> Does this require approval from our board? Ray. Oh uh, no, that was uh, just to inform you okay. what the corrections were. We, your board requested that. So, Mr. Chair, so because of the temporary due pass. The dollar amount is the same as Already right occurred, now. right. So there was no change in the dollar amount. No change. Right. Yeah. So there's Yeah, this might be a little off subject. And we <laughs> allocated a little bit of money off of the disaster re recovery reserve. We have to change our policy anyway because in, in our uh, fund policy, we adopted a disaster a disaster recovery reserve for one million dollars. We did. We we actually, Mr. Chair, if I may, we actually discussed that, and um, I think what we discussed was creating the policy and then moving a million dollars into it. So we'll, I don't know. I think what we can do is come back to your board August 9th with that correction. Okay. It, it, yeah. Because it's yeah, and then if we do need to change the policy, let's be prepared to change it. That we'll day. we'll be prepared to have it ready to go. Okay. So that will be August 9th. We will discuss the GAN limit. We'll have your board, um, you know, approve that resolution as well as adopting okay. the budget you need a with, staff through resolution. To write that language. Jeez. Supervisor Patello's available. Okay. He's well, an expert. See, that's that why I had Supervisor <laughs> Munzer propose it. <laughs> <laughs> so other than that, Mr. Chair, I think we're at the final de um, budget Staffing. deliberations. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, we have a budget. We've had our hearings, obviously a lot less painful than they have been in the past. <laughs> I have to commend staff for the work, the time that you guys have put in. I know when I was first elected and uh, I sat, uh, I didn't get sworn in until 2011, but I sat in 2010 through the budget hearings and I walked out of here. I said, what did I get into? These guys are <laughs> talking about pencils and pens and paper clips and <laughs> going through every single fund. And the reason I said that is because I came from the county of Monterey where their budget is, you know, um, much larger than San Benito's and they got through their budget hearings in a day and then here it lasted five days sometimes six and so 
but I'm glad that staff has made the adjustments to make this process a lot more efficient, not, not only for board members, but for staff as well. I think you guys have done an excellent job, and I look forward to changes and improvements you guys are going to make next year. Uh, absolutely. Uh, any other members of the board wish to make comments? No, you couldn't have said, I couldn't have said it better. Thank no. you for that, and uh, thanks, staff, and uh, everybody that was involved. It's a big, big job, so big thank you all. all right. Thanks, Melinda. Anyone else wish to provide comments? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, another uh, great experience, and uh, seeing the staff work so well together just like a few minutes ago uh, is refreshing. So thank you very much for all the hard work. And it's a lot of hours, a lot of uh, candles burned. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor Munzer? Thank you, Mr. Chair. As I said at the beginning of the meeting, you know, 10 or 12 hours ago, great job, staff. On to the Capitol. <laughs> no, no rest. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, C to uh, our CAO, um, we have to uh, our next actions. We have to adopt the um, is it the GAN limit? Yeah. So on August 9th, we'll come back to your we'll board. We'll, we'll have that. Yeah. The only thing you have to do today is you should have a sheet of paper here in front of you. Recommended budget. That's right. Okay. So if someone is uh, willing to make that motion. I will make the motion, Mr. Chair, to approve. To, oh, I'm sorry. You're, Whoever no, no, has their mic on I'll first will get to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one of us had our mic on. Approve 2016 2017 recommended budget, including all schedules, including all amendments presented during the budget hearings. Second. Okay, there's a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries uh, 5 0. And so we will adjourn our special meeting. And uh, again, invite the public to our special meeting, which is Thursday, um, June 30th at 6 o'clock at San Juan. No. Yes. 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 Well, actually, I, be I believe it's 545. They, they were, they were, there was a slight I correction. We have a special closed session at 545, which will last about five minutes. But the special <laughs> meeting with the City of Hall will be at 6 o'clock. <laughs> okay. <laughs>